Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithms. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push our lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on the bigger banquets. Miss that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth day in hair, extra fruité the brand. You can't move me, the music is man. It's a con job, but this grand. I'm blessed with a great hand. Amongst many that stink, and yeah, it took some hard work. Blind love play a huge role, and they say that it don't. When they're feeding you fool's gold, and if I know one thing, the truth's home. Even if it's a tough thing to swallow, an even harder thing to hold, and truly know without a doubt while on the globe. And even though that seems inherent, it ain't always so apparent. Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it. But don't worry, it's a pretty February, in a year with more to carry, and more days is yet to come. Under the sun, taking the ferry to the city, where the moment's extra pretty. Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain that isn't equal to the real world. All that stress ain't saving me fear though I swear to God I'm trying But they pushing the demons down my esophagus Screaming the easy life, what I want all of ways Praise made up holidays, tell me that love is the answer Just to boost this economy But I'm more sell now, but I ain't following I ain't a hollow man, I'm full of them fall winds Take it all with a tall grin, and if you feel it do it with me and just sing with the song. Say it all for what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is. It ain't all so big. So big, so big, so big, so big. Take it all for what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is. It ain't all so big. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, y'all. It's me, Security Boss. <laughs> Welcome to SB Nation. It's Security Boss Unsolicited, and thank you so much for being here. We're here tonight for another awesome Monday. And I appreciate you all for being here. Make sure when you're coming into the live, you're giving us the thumbs up. And I'm going to bring up my co-host, and we got a couple things we're going to go over. And then we're going to... Get into the show. Hey, what's up, y'all? Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah. So I'm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and come back in because I cannot hear you at all. Okay. I'm gonna go out and come back in. All right. All right. Do that. All right, guys. So once we um while we get uh our co-host together, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some things that are getting ready to happen, and then we're gonna diff again jump into the show. First things first. Um, uh, I choose you. Y'all know it's back. On Friday, we should have the first commercial, the first advertisement with J.R. Wisdom. He's going to be in the commercial telling you all what it is he wants and his and an fine young lady. So, Bachelorette, I need you here. I need y'all paying attention. I need y'all ready to go ahead and go ahead and let me know what's going on at SB, SB Show 2020 at Gmail. And I appreciate that so much because we need some real bachelorettes. Now, listen. I'm talking about real single women. I'm not talking about nobody that's been divorced and separated. Excuse me. Divorcees are okay. Separated for five years. Don't know where the husband at. I'm not talking about y'all. I want some single women. I need y'all to uh, make sure you drop in those emails. Dearly beloved. At sb2020 at gmail.com. Also, excuse me, y'all. sbshow2020 at gmail.com. Forgive me for that. The other thing is those of you who have gone over to my channel and you checked out the SB gear. Thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> I see you out there. I see you. I appreciate it. Make sure you take a picture and also send those to me at SB show 2020 at gmail.com. We will appreciate that black man. How you doing? <laughs> hey, sugar. You know, we had some there ain't nothing the, the, the devil got into my electronics over here. I had to get him out. I Daddy hear you. It sure did. Daddy this Daddy is, Daddy. Yeah, hey, hey. yeah. Come on, man. Come on, DJ Boss. Hey, listen. It is so good to be here today, man. It's always good to be here on Marvelous Mondays with my with with with, with Security Boss, Mr. Boss in the back. 
The chat is all that. And guess what, guys? Go get your merchandise. SB is five star. Go in right now. Yeah. Go get. I appreciate that so much. But listen, uh, we're gonna say hello to a few people, and then we're gonna jump into the show. I know you. I know you got the topic. I know you got the title. I know you're trying to add some. Maybe take away. We're gonna we're gonna talk our way through this though, and then about halfway through the show, we're gonna open up the lines and we're gonna ask everyone to come up and come and tell us what they think. All right. But for now, we're going to uh, Computer Geek. Hello. Thank you for being here. He says Lapeef Le Network sent him over. Thank you. A new sub. We appreciate you so much. Sean Brown. Hey, Computer Geek and study. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Also, Mr. Steele, Dr. Steele. It's good to see you. It's definitely good to see you, Mr. C. OG Patrice, how are you? It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. The Thanos Theory. I, you know what? I like the way you change your name all in the middle of everything, trying to throw us off, but I got you. I see you. Hey, Mel. Mel, I hope you're doing well. It's good to see you all. Thank you guys for being here. And if it's someone that I missed, I forgive me. Y'all know I will definitely continue throughout the show to try to shout you all out. I appreciate it so much. So very much. So, Black man. Mm hmm on the world today uh, you got anything because you know what i just i just haven't been paying attention quentin how are you it's good to see you i, I, happen, I, happen, I happen to, to see the ratchet uh, what ratchet you saw the 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 females that tore the restaurant up because uh yeah, they charged yeah. a dollar and some more on the dipping sauce yeah i saw the ratchet too i hate the ratchet get the shine man that was a terrible situation mm -hmm. You know what? There's not going to be any amount of punishment that's going to suit that that restaurant owner for them. There's not going to be anything. That I, I, I would say it differently. I think the only thing that the restaurant owner would be satisfied with would, would be for them to come clean up the restaurant, stand in front of the restaurant with a sign around their neck saying what they did <laughs> and pay for everything that needs to be fixed out of their pocket. $25,000 worth of damage. Listen, it's crazy. Uh, I got something else for you, though. OK, but wait a minute. Before we go away from the young girls, mm -hmm. I really hate to see young women act like that. But you know what? Shortly after that, I was looking at something and another young lady was losing it also. And she was actually spraying. Some, this was at a convenience store. And she was actually spraying some kind of chemical in the convenience store uh, attendant's face because he locked her in. He locked her in for whatever reason. He wouldn't let her out. So she continuously sprayed something in his face to try to get him to open the door. Periodically, she would just spray something into it and he wouldn't let her out. But he wouldn't he wouldn't attack her. He just he just maintained his position and she continued to spray something in his face. But you know what, black man, I'm really thinking that there's a uh, we have an issue. I mean, I know we have an issue, but I think there might really be something going on mentally because this is just not regular. This is not regular upset behavior. This is way beyond I'm upset, you know. It's just way beyond that. So I don't know, but I'm, I'm praying for these young ladies because you know what? They can't keep it up with these antics for well, somebody responds to them and it ain't going to be good because you can't do this kind of stuff to people, to men. It's always men. Well, you know what? I'm probably wrong with that. They're probably doing it to women too, but we've seen them do it to men. So, you know, but let's read this super chat before we get started. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hassel. I want to tell them about the super chat. Thank you so much for being here. It says, You've become my new favorite YouTuber. Thank you. <laughs> Your relationship with God is shown in everything you do on this app. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. But, um, he brings me to something that I did mention. If you're new to the channel, we read all super chats, but $9.99 and up will get you the money line. I mean, the explosion alone, you know, I, I know this explosion is going to happen, but I still like, ah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, now, now secure the boss. Yes, sir. Have you heard about, um, I think your dream, I think your dream is going to come true. 
here in the great state of Texas uh, and Florida and a few other states, they have something that they're trying to sign into Congress and then get it approved by Senate. Uh, it's called the Social Media Privacy Protection and Consumer Rights Act. My dream. Tell me, how did I dream about it? What did I say? When you said children shouldn't be on social oh, media? Absolutely not. absolutely not. You're right. This this act is to ban children of a certain age off social media, period. Mm. Where they can't get on it, they can't be subject, they can't. And it, it, I, I don't know how to. You need to follow that. Is that the governor? Who's pushing that? The government, yeah. Yeah, we need to. Everybody needs to follow that because um, our kids are being solely influenced by this Internet. And I'm telling y'all, it is good. There are some things that are really good on the Internet. I'm not going to take it away from it, but there are too many bad things in between. And we cannot control. And you you gave us the example for your son alone. At 15, they took the uh, the blocks and the parameters off and said, oh, this person doesn't need it anymore. And he's only right. 15. Right. So why you couldn't make that decision? Well, how can they just make that decision for you? Exactly. Listen, I am serious about this. I'm telling y'all, I did not get my child a cell phone um, until she was at the age where she wasn't with me. Meaning that if I needed to drop her off everywhere she went, track practice, uh, work, whatever thing she did. If I needed to drop her off, I could not see why she needed a cell phone. Only until she got away from me that I needed to do that. Now, there were other people around her trying to sneak her a cell phone and she showed them very quickly that she didn't need one. Because back in those days, you know, there was only free nights and weekends. It ain't like it is now. Yeah, I remember them days. Yeah, so you you know, you sneak and give a child a cell phone that the mama done told me you shouldn't have one. Let her run the bill up for you. You will see. Mm -hmm. she showed them very well exactly what needed to happen so we got over that quickly but you know now it's a time it seems like that the parents it seems like i hate to say it black men but y'all seem a little defeated some of you yeah um because the influences are so so much you know it's coming in every direction it's like i take the phone away some kind of way they be getting these little cheap phones i don't even know how but they'll take them away then they'll get another one so mm. it's almost like y'all just it's like y'all fighting a losing battle, but don't give up. Yeah, it's tough. It's <laughs> don't tough. Give up. Continue uh, to fight. And one more thing I want to bring to the um, you know, something my grandfather used to say all the time. You know, I always mock him and my grandmother, well, not mock them, but repeat that what they say a lot. Um, my grandfather used to say, son, it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Um, uh, and I've just been sitting back watching lately, and I've been watching uh Guys, I'm, I'm gonna give you some advice. The 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 the, the when you're the the most quiet uh, is when God makes the most noise. Ooh, that's good. I need to write that down. Mm. When you're the most quiet is when God makes the most noise on your behalf. And when I tell you what happens in the dark will definitely and will forever come to the light. It will it, it will exactly do that. Uh, and so I just want people to be mindful of what they do, mindful of how you treat people. Yes, have your opinion. Yes, have your criticisms, absolutely. But when you cross the boundary, you have to know that um, you may have to you may have to suffer your own consequences of of, of everything that you put out there. So I just wanted to encourage the the, the, the audience today. Mm. I don't know where that came from, Black Man, but I felt like somebody needed to hear that. Yeah. When mm. you're the most quiet, God makes the most noise. Well, you know what? I'm going to add to that because sometimes he tells you to be quiet. Mm. That's what you need to hear when he Hush. tells you to be quiet. Yeah. Be quiet. That was for somebody. <laughs> That's hey. strong. That's very strong. So listen, the topic of today is, do you attract what you want? Now, you know, me and Mr. Balls be coming up with these things. We be bouncing off each other and just, you know, just trying to just trying to make it all make sense because it seems like it's just so hard right so when i when i you know i went on my little exercise then normally when i go walking is when i get these get these topics and these you know it comes to me at that particular time and on the way back i, I was struggling a little bit i was like ah oh, it's, it's four o'clock and i don't have a topic what am i gonna do what am i gonna do right right so it just came to me it's like but what came to me is um how do you attract what you want? It was more of a question. How do you attract what you want? But okay. of course, you know, we have to put it out there in a way that everybody understands. We're looking for some answers. So it's do you attract what you want? Because we want y'all to let us know. 
but black men, I, you know, I always put you on the spot, start with you. What mm -hmm. do you think about this? Do you attract what you want? Yes. I think uh, you attract who you are. <laughs> uh, I think that, you know, like me growing up, it's, uh, I had this issue, right? I had this, this thing going on with me where I used to attract a lot of white girls. I did. Ooh, That's Lord, the thing leading you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, them white girls love me. I don't know what it was. They, they love athletes, so you know I can yeah, imagine. Yeah, they do. And so, and so, my grandmother, uh, my grandmother used to say, "I love everybody," but my mother, my mama said, "If y'all can't use the same comb, don't bring her here." Oh, <laughs> and so, uh, so, but yeah, so you know that kind of that kind of changed the wave of things, but you know, I say, "Mama, what?" Y'all can use the same comb. Don't bring her here. Um, and so uh, that's pretty much what uh, what I had to go through during that time uh, as I was growing up. But I think that you you do. I think in this situation, in this topic, that you do. You attract what it is you want. Now, the thing about it is, the reason I brought that up about what happened to me is because a lot of black men, they attract what they want or who wants them, and they go through it, right? A lot of, uh, a lot of our sisters don't want to see um, our men with other uh, ethnic groups. Uh, I, I, I I gave an example on my show one night uh, when we had the uh, Pro Bowl, and they had all these limos pull up and these huge two hundred thousand dollar cars and all crazy stuff. They coming in all kind of vehicles and whatever. And every black man that got out of those expensive, nice Bugattis and all other nice cars. They were all with Caucasian women, Caucasian and Latin women. Mm, okay. And if you look, and you look at the comments of that live, boy, those black women, oh, turn the camera off. I don't know about it, you know, but these are who the men are loving. This is who they love. We can't respect who these women love. I mean, who these men love. They love these women. These women, I guess these women love them back. But and 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 we had to have one day security boss. You got to talk about that. You know, why when men are when they get highly successful. Why are they choosing to 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 go marry other ethnic group of women instead of marrying within their own culture? You know what? I don't. I'm I'm a I'm kind. Of, was it your grandma? Not your mama. Which one was it? Your grandma? Well, your grandma? My grandmother loves everybody. My mama said, "If y'all can't use the same comb, don't bring her here." I'm kind of leaning towards your grandma. I don't care who they love, long as they love them. Hey. But that's not a that's not a question I need to ask. But I I took a different approach to it because. Um, what I hear a lot of times in these spaces is that men can't find a good woman. So that 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 makes me question, um, do you attract what you want? But you remember the initial topic was mm -hmm. how do you attract what you want? Right. That was the initial, that's the subject matter of the situation is how do you do it? Now, let me let me I'm, I'm going to take my time and I need you to interject when you want. Uh, correct me whenever you need to, because um, this is what I'm seeing, and um, you know, this is what I'm seeing and what I'm what I'm imagining is going on. Because there's so many men, uh, you know, as we were growing up, we grew up in a lower income. I'm, I'm gonna use myself for an example. Grew up in a lower income community, not the hood per se, not projects, no, but a lower income community. But we had I had a mother and father in the home. They both were workers, but my dad we my dad made a house and a home for us. You know, it wasn't a mansion on the hill, but it was, it was for us. We lived in the community. Everything was good. It wouldn't plague with uh, crime or anything like that, but we still lived in the hood. So I can imagine for a time, hood boys per se would be the ones that would want to talk to me because, Hey, we lived there together. You know, they saw me, I saw them. That would be who you would be dating. But then you grow up, you go to college, you do different things, you get better jobs, you explore the world, you might go to the military, you do different things. Your mind begins to broaden. You start seeing that there's a whole nother world out there with a whole lot of different people. And then you decide, me included, hey, I want something different. Oh, I see this over here. And then, then the boy to live in your neighborhood all of a sudden becomes, what? That's kind of almost like your brother. You don't want him. <laughs> I wouldn't date no boy living in my neighborhood. This is what I'm saying. This is me talking. I ain't date no boy living in my neighborhood. That's crazy. So I can imagine 
that the men would pretty much say the same thing. I ain't dating no girl living in my neighborhood. They, they, you know, everything is lightened up for them. They, they've been in the military. They've been all these different places. They've been to college. They play football. Like you said, they've been introduced to other races and women like them. They appeal to them. They love them. They loving all that. They're getting all this attention. So the girl that's from the hood where they grew up is no longer good enough anymore. But guess what? I still kind of like to go back there. I still like them booties that they got. I still like to party with them and hang out with them, but you know, so I'm still attracting them because they know who I am. You know, I'm still, you know, they know me. Go ahead, but you're muted. I heard a man say on the platform one night, he said it's gotten to the point where as he was growing up, he loved black women, loved dating them. Uh, he said now the tide has turned where the independence has not only, he said it's, he's, it's great that a woman can stand on her own two feet. He said, but now it's gone from I can stand on my own two feet that till I don't need a black, I don't need a man. I don't need a leader. I need a partner. Everything has turned. Uh, and he said, it's sad to say, and this is what he said. And I was like, oh, Lord. It's, he said, sad to say, but black women have become uh, to black men extracurricular activities, not wives. Wow. You're right. He but said, we'll go get the booty, let them back it up, throw it back, jump from the ceiling fan. He said, once we have a good time, we go and marry uh, Annalise. But get, but what if I can't find Annalise, though? What if Annalise is not readily available to me? What's going on? What am I missing? What well, what, if well, what I've seen, uh, what, what I've seen, me personally, uh, it is very easy. I'm telling you, it is very easy to walk up to a uh, to a white girl and have a conversation. Okay. It, uh, or or to pull or, or to pull her in, make her laugh, right? And then, so, but the thing is, I love black women. I love them. My mother's black, wife black, daughter's black. I just love them. I, and I I talk to my daughter all the time. I say, baby, don't ever get to a point where, when people see you coming, they they drop their heads or leave the room. You don't want to carry that kind of attitude, or you don't want to carry that kind of aura. That's just attitude. Oh, here she comes. She's so mean. I think a lot of women out here, they wear their pain on their shoulders. And you can just hear it when they speak. You can hear it when, they, when they're when they interacting with other people. Um, you know, back in the day, um, security boss, you can have a conversation. You would see two women talking. They'd be like, yeah, good Lord, it's good. Girl, you heard about Earl them down the street. Girl, Earl is something else, ain't it? You know, it'll be a great conversation back and forth between two women. I used to be in the grocery store as a kid looking up at my grandmother talking to another lady. Now, it's this. Bitch, <laughs> girl, you You know, it's just, I, they don't have no respect. It's like, they talk to each other that way, and then they, as a, as a term of endearment, and then they turn it and flip it as a tool and use it against their man. Mm. Hmm. Wow. Hold on. Hold that thought for a minute. Emmanuel, thank you for your four dollar ninety nine cents super chat. He says, "When you fly first cat class, it's hard to go back." To e man, these women gonna kill you, boy. I'm, I'm sorry. They gonna delete you, boy. <laughs> Woo, e man, you killing them. E man, don't do it to them today. Don't do but it. Listen though, but like you just said, black man, that's what I want though. That's what I attract. You know why? You know what? This is see. This is this is this is what I'm thinking. Uh -huh. In order for me, okay, I fly first class because I have the money to do so. I have, uh, and this is just a scenario. We're just talking. I'm not talking about myself particularly, but I had the money to fly fly first class. But I'm still attracted to that that woman in the hood, though. I like the you know I like to go back to the hood and party. I like to play cards. I like to hang out. I like to drink Hennessy, but. The woman that's there, I can't, I can't seem to get right with her. So, yeah. what am I to do? What am I to okay. do? A lot of, well, I'm, I'm gonna do it on both sides. So, a lot of men want to go back to the hood and get them a wife, but yep. then the wife has been so saturated in, in toxicity that she gives you, she gives you the triple whopper effect. And when I, when we, let me, let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, at restaurants, uh, it's uh, I'll use Burger King. Burger King has a triple whopper. They bring it it once a year, and they say it's a limited time only. It's good for only for a limited time, and after that uh, limited time is up, the burger goes away. That's what happens in our in our communities when we have toxic women that have not received the help, have not sat down with a therapist, and so you go in. They're beautiful. They find they built sexy. They talk well. Sex is off the chain. Oh God, you meet their mama, their grandmammy. I mean, I'm sorry, grandmother, and then. All of a sudden, 
<laughs> that triple whopper was a limited time. She was a limited time only. Once you get in good with her, a year pass, and you deepen a relationship with her and don't let you get her pregnant, she's going to show you a side of her that you haven't seen before. It, okay, now, wait, not not, not all women, but some. Okay, but stop right there. How, what, how is that possible? Because well, remember, we grew up in the same place, so we probably were exposed to the same type of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I was able as a man, we just, you know, to able to explore, to 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 uh, go to college and she maybe wasn't or what have you. So she hasn't been off. She had she's still living next door to her grandma. You know what I'm saying? You know how they right, all right, right. but she's still living next door to her grandma. But I'm still attracting those type as a man. I'm still attracting those type of women. That's what I'm attracting. What do I need to do as a man? But before you answer that. Emmanuel, thank you for your $4.99 super chat. We taking the hood to the first class. We play space dominoes and a whole a whole black experience in first class. You right. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Why we can't do that? Why we can't do that? So black men, if we're still attracting what we were, what do we need to do? <sighs> Because what I hear a lot of times is men saying that there are no good women out there. Yeah. I, and I think when you're exposed to something for so long, um, you it start. You, part of you It becomes who you are. It becomes who you are. Exactly. Um, and a lot of men say there's no good women out there because they haven't seen any. Uh, and, 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 and it starts with their mother. Uh, when you grow up and you see your mother, it reminds me of uh, Tyler Perry's book. Don't make me take my earrings off. Um, when he talked about his mom and his mom, used to make him sit in the chair and watch her watch her have sex with other men because he was acting soft. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this a real thing you just said? Yeah, yeah. Tyler Perry has a book out, a uh, documentary on how he got where he is. It's called Don't Make Me Take My Earrings Off. And he's it's based on the life of his grandmother. Wow. And, and in that book, he said his mother used to make him watch her have sex with men because he was soft. He, he wasn't becoming a he wasn't a boy. He had feminine tendencies. So she would make him watch her have sex with different men uh, that will come in. And um, and that's where it starts. When you see a woman doing that and you watch that for years, when you get older in your mind, that's that's why we need. That's why therapy is so important, because in your mind, you're thinking, oh, hell, all women like that. They all going to do it. One, either now, you know, it's going to happen. Right. Uh and like even now, Tyler Perry, when have you seen him married or when have you seen him with a woman consistently at all? I, mean, I thought I thought him and baby mama was was pretty close. They're they're close. They're not a couple. They, they're no longer together, but they're oh. co-parenting. I thought they were like in pretty, pretty deep. I didn't yeah, know they, they marriage they or not, were. but I thought that was it for him. Yeah. He talked about co-parenting, like, you know, and not being married and not getting married and leaving a legacy to his son and all that stuff. So, um, you know, he's look at him now, you know, he's not married. He, he's not in a serious relationship. You never, at, right before this baby mama, there was nothing. You, you seen Tyler Perry 10 years in a row doing movies. You never seen him on a date. You never seen him with a female. You never nothing. No, you still ain't seen him with a no female. I haven't. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, so how do we know what his mom did to him? How we know that didn't affect him. Right. He didn't go get the help, the therapy. And maybe he's in therapy now. He's a billionaire. He, he can afford a therapist, uh, a personal one. But I'm just saying that you didn't get the help in that area. You're great in one area, but you didn't get the help in the, in the other area. So you're good writing and doing movies and make people laugh. But on the inside, you're, 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 you're tortured. So uh, it reminds me of Robin Williams. Robin Williams made everybody laugh. Millions of people laugh. Yep. Millions of people laugh every day and nobody knew on the inside he was he was dying on the inside. Went home and took his own life. Yeah. So right. so you know when you have this mental state where you your mind is on something you be around something the bible even says it. You become what you associate yourself with or what you are around. And if you're in the hood and you see women beating up me and every day cussing me and out calling me and out their names and 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 sleeping with this boy, sleeping with this boy, baby mama here, three kids, four kids over there, and you never get a taste of anything outside of that, then yes, your mind is going to go to that. But then, watch this. When you get outside of it and you see other cultural women and they pretty, long, beautiful hair, they look good, they smell good, you're like, oh, whoa, I didn't know this was out here. And now you gravitate more to that because you know what's at home and you gravitate more to that. 
I think that's the problem. I don't think that they are. Hold on for a minute, right. though. We got a super chat I want to do. This is coming from JG. Um, JG, thank you so much for your $9.99 super chat. He says, don't allow what you see make you believe a lie and forget the truth. Mm. The money line. Money line. I'm already at every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Money line. I'm already at every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Now, see, I'm going back to T-Shaw. T-Shaw had a comment that she made. And mm -hmm. I am, um, I'm going to pose this question because I'm kind of believing this. T-Shaw says, do you think some men are afraid to step out of their comfort zone? See, yes. this is what I'm thinking is a situation because it's real easy for me to want the hood girl that I grew up with, that I like the way they look. I actually like the things they do. They make me comfortable. So I don't have to be nothing but me. I don't have to step it up. I don't have to elevate. I can I can smoke. I can drink. I can raise hell. I can do whatever I want to do. But I'm still a better man because I've accomplished what I needed to do as far as my purpose goes, you know, in life as far as being a man. And I may even be thinking I'm ready for marriage. And, and these girls that I grew up with, they look good. You know, they hanging out with me. You know, they accepted me for who I am. I like them. But like you said, a year go by, then they become the biggest hell raisers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I can't figure out why. Yep, because get, because people when people become complacent, and a man knows, like a man, like somebody put Gregory Scotland said, are men suffering in silence in the chat? Yes, they are. And I'm gonna tie these two things together. When men get comfortable with a woman, and they've been around that type of woman for a long time. And they know that in their minds, it's the best I can do because they haven't been outside that zone yet. They tolerate it. And women know that. Women know a man can't go out and get any woman he won't, but I can go out and probably get any man I want. Mm. Right. And so since and so since I have that advantage. So he need me. So I can be I can be the biggest, I can be the biggest ratchet, loud talking, cuss him out every day. And he gonna kiss sniff right back up onto me. Because he can't do better. And I already put in his head he can't do better. So wait, how fine wait, I am, big yeah. breast, small waist, big booty, where he else he gonna get this at? And those men fall for it. So wait a minute, black man. You think that a woman thinks that a man can't get another woman? Exactly. Really? Let, let, let me give you an example. If, now, if, wait, if, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Let me process first. Okay, wait, I, wait. I would ask the women in the chat, do they believe that? Because I would tell you, no. I think most women know that a man can get another woman. Mm. Well, Why would you say that? that that's, that's, that's been an age-old thing to, for a man to have more than one woman if he right. wants to. It all depends on the man. Because, to take for, say, for instance, you're with the nerd of the, of, in the hood. The one that fixes everybody the VCR. The one that fixes everybody a DVD player. The one that, that can fix your car or, or do something to your car. or, or The one that the, the, nobody likes him. And if a girl sees something in him and that's a nerd with a big penis, I'm going to have sex with him. I'm going to do what I need to do with him. And I'm, I'm going to forever have him. And he got a job too, girl. Where he work at? Oh, my God. Yeah, they're going to get him. And they're going to use him. And they're going to use him. And they're going to use him up. <sighs> Wow. And he's gonna keep running back to it now. If you have a confident man, oh yeah. But it, it, but it, but but most men, especially today, oh most men today, those big booty girls throw that thing back on them, uh, and they and they lose their minds. They lose their damn minds, and and then they and they won't leave them. They they will not leave them. I'm telling. You, I know some weak dudes. Girl, girl, sexy, fine as hell, and they won't leave them. But they'll submit to other men that are manly. A man walk in the room and tell him to be quiet. They'd be like, okay. Oh, girl, did you hear that? Girl. But your man at home? Nope. So what you're saying is they have gotten comfortable. The men have gotten comfortable with these type women. Are they marrying them or are they just staying in relationships with them? Whatever the woman chooses. Wow. So are they, so that goes back to the question. Are we attracting who we are? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because if, if he likes that kind of woman, if he likes that kind of woman, or not, I'm not even going to say he liked her. She may have liked him, and he probably looked at her and said, I've never had nothing like this in my life. <laughs> 
So you're trying to make it sound like that we attract what we want versus what what's good for us. Or what you know, you yeah. trying to we're, make we're, it sound like the man wanted this woman for whatever reason. We're gonna keep it like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he engaged and then he was hooked. So yeah. now he has no idea what is good for him. So he's willing to stay in this relationship. Mm -hmm. And then when he gets deep into the relationship and he's telling everybody, man, that's my girl, man. She's special. She's one of a kind. All right. That's in January. In March, man, we went on a trip. We had fun, man. She made love to me. It was great. April, man, she pregnant, bro. I'm having my first kid. August. Man, I don't know what's wrong with her. Man, she she got an attitude now. She she acting crazy with you, boy. I, I November. Damn, man. She don't even want to do Thanksgiving dinner, bro. Like everything I do. Uh December. Uh man, dang, bro. She, now she's saying she don't want to be with me no more. She says she's gonna put the child support people in my life. Wow. February. She had a baby. March, child support papers. Uh May. Another statistic, single mama with a son, with a child, daddy outside the house, they're not married, and we're back in the statistic game. It's a revolving. Mm -hmm. So so we gotta we gotta we gotta we really gotta go back and, and fix this stuff because you just gave an example of this young man attracting what he wants. And and it turned out to be not good for him. Right. And, and he it. wanted to be good for him, but he's too scared to speak up. He he wanna tell her, he wanna tell her, baby, I want you, I want to be with you. I just need your behavior to get better. But what he does not understand that is you can't change anyone. You can't change them. You, you, they are who they are. And like Maya Angelou, I always do it. And I know, I know, I know Vaughn loves it when I do her voice. But Maya Angelou said it. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. So and when she, when you, you got to believe them and you got to see those red flags and you got to get out of there. The thing about men right now, Lord, I know I'm saying this because, you know, I'm an advocate for my brothers. But we don't know how to let go. But we keep, we keep the snake that bites us and poisons poisons us. Hold on, before we, bef I got a thought. Don't I don't want to forget it. But let's do this first. Mister Hassel says, in this generation, ninety percent of the women chase ten percent of the men. The select men, things have changed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you so I much, Jet. Ninety percent of the women are chasing ten percent of the men. And that's ten percent. And that ten percent of the men that's making six figures, the high value men. So now you got ninety percent. Since when did we have ten percent of high value men in the United black men in the United States? Well, you know, come on, you know that you. Listen, well, everybody if you look, everybody six figures, you're right, mm -hmm. right? Everybody six figures. Yeah, they're in a ten percent projectile. Gotcha. So now that those ninety percent of women are chasing ten percent of those men, they're not gonna get what they want, but they will settle for a weakling. Hold on, hold on. I need you to hold that thought. Let's do this. Emmanuel, thank you so much for your nine dollar ninety nine cents. Super J. He says, Black man unfiltered. I disagree with you. I know garbage men with options. Men have always had options. That's false. Women's biggest fear. That's false. Women's biggest fear. He's gonna he's going to get someone younger and sexier than her. I actually believe more so with Emmanuel. But okay, let me, let me, let me tell you why I disagree. I'm gonna run it anytime. Give me Oh, oh, this is what I was going to say, but then we go back to that because uh -huh. um, a lot of people are weighing in on that. But what I was getting ready to say is that, listen, as men, um, we want and we um, we we hold you all up as leaders. So in a relationship, if a man is not setting an example for the relationship and how he wants that relationship to be, what is the expectation of the woman? Okay, say it again. I need to process that, honey. I need to talk slow. Let me talk slow. Yeah, yeah, talk slow. I'm going to see students okay. today. In relationships, mm -hmm. we want men to be the leaders. Exactly. We, we want you all to lead, to guide, to be the example. I want you all to show us what we should be doing or how you want to be loved, how you want this relationship to go. I need you to show me. If you're not doing that, what is the expectation of me as a woman? 
or any woman. I think that's uh that's 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 setting ourselves up to being to to for failure. Um, what is? I think that when men don't show what it is that they want, uh, because let, let me go back to this. On Tuesday night, I know you had to leave early, but when you left, something happened. There's women that were on that panel that said these words, security boss, that were married. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what my husband feels. If he wants me to be a certain way, I'm not in this marriage to be to be connected to all these needs and wants all the time. Mm, I don't agree with that. So, if, so, I'm hearing, if I'm hearing it right, I don't I don't know. Maybe I'm not hearing yeah. it right. So what? So what I'll try right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So what I'll do is, I mean, I mean, yeah. This is this is what one of the young ladies said. So what I do is, I will sit down and hear my husband out about how he feels and what he wants me to do. But at the end of the day, when I have my mind made up to do something, whether he likes it or not, he has to understand that I'm going to do what's in that best interest for me. Oh Lord. Now see, I don't agree with that. Right. And but but these are women that are already married right but that's what i'm saying see, see see listen what we're here to do over here at sb nation black men included is we're trying to um give the example so we don't Luke, 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 remember she, she oh was on the panel. She we're, trying, we're trying to give the example so we see remember on friday <laughs> a couple of weeks ago we were taught we were said that we were taught to fail at marriage because the example was horrible so over here, every opportunity that we get, we are gonna make sure that we that we place an example out there that you can actually follow that works. And the example that works is for the man to lead in order for him to get what he wants. Because I don't want to see a man two years down the road like that, that 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 little thing you just went through that scenario you just painted. We don't want any more broken men and broken households. So I'm saying. Men, if you want to have, if you want to attract what you want, you got to be the example. You got to be the one that said, no, 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 no. We're not going to do this way. Whatever this is, whatever right. it is, I don't even know. I don't even know what it is, but whatever it is, that woman needs to get on your program. You know, if, if you don't want to have sex on Monday night, that might not be the best example. Then you don't have sex on Monday night. But whatever it is, men, I need you all to set the example. Don't let these women run you. I'm sorry to say that, ladies, but y'all can't run the relationship. No, 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 no. I need the man. So, because until you get married, this man needs to, he needs to be attracting what he says he wants. Now, what I hear men say that they want mostly kind of lines up with somewhat of a traditional woman. Peace. Right? Am I right about this? Can I say it that way? I didn't say a traditional woman, but lines up with someone, somewhat of a traditional woman, a woman that has role or has her role as a wife, mm. does certain things, brings peace and cooperation to the relationship. Now, now, if that's what you want, right, then you're the example and you're the person that is uh, setting that expectation. But if you out here drinking Hennessy, you in the strip club, you doing all kind of things that don't that don't um, resemble that type of relationship. You ain't gonna get that. You are gonna get the girl that black man just talked about. So, in other words, you know how you gonna be out here slanging it, slanging it, slanging it, slanging it, and you think you are gonna get the girl that's reserved herself for the man that's gonna take her to married life. How, how is that? Possible? Right. How's and well, okay. So let me say this. Let me, let me, let me, let me try to build this arc to go down, to go, to go toward the water. Um, I, in this day and time security boss, the women are slanging it just like the men are. There are more exactly. women in the strip club than men. Exactly. And I'm not talking about the dancers. I'm not no, talking I'm about the dancers. I'm talking about women. I'm agreeing. That's why you can't go men. That's why you can't go. If you say it to yourself that you want this type of woman, I'm saying to you, women and men, men, I want you all to set the example for what you want. You're saying that most of you all want something that lines kind of up with a traditional woman, a woman with values, a woman with some kind of peace, 
someone that's not chaotic, someone that's uh can get on your plan. If that's what you want, you have to set in place a plan. And that plan cannot include the strip club. Y'all know that Hennessy make you sin. Y'all can't be drinking all that Hennessy, smoking all Can that. Make you sin. Yep. Well, and you can't be slanging it all over uh the US of A. You got to be preserving yourself because the type of woman you want or the woman that you're trying to plan with or set the example for, that ain't where she's going to be. And she's not going to be taking part in that kind of stuff. But what I already know is that we have a comfort. Women, men have a comfort. And we like that woman who participates in this kind of stuff because she'll also be slanging it with us. And right. And, and we see Miss Tia. Miss Tia is, is, is of the well, modern age. She said. Are not traditional women. I didn't say, I, no, I didn't say you were. I said traditional, like kind of lines up. I agree with you, kind of. But listen, I'm saying whatever that man wants, right. he needs to be the example for. It don't have to be a traditional woman. But but what I hear men say a lot is that the values they want kind of line up with a traditional relationship. Mm -hmm. Meaning she has her roles and he has his. That's the right. far as I'm going with that. It's right. up for that man to set that example for what he wants his woman to be like. But guess what? If you out here slinging and she's slinging and y'all taking turns slinging and y'all don't know each other are doing it, then that's probably what you set the example for. Right. Because you have to see, see what happens is we get in a comfortable spot. We keep attracting what we what we are. You know, see, you might have to trade in the Hennessy for some scotch. The scotch will take you to a different side of town. Yes, indeed. Dearly beloved. Right. And over there, they drank slow. Yeah, they the have, scotch will take you to the art museum. The they, hen will take you to the club. Take you straight to the club, won't it? Hen, yep. Hen. See, we got we to get away from that. But you know what, though, security boss? I will say this. You know what shocks me? I, I'm glad, and I'm, I'm so glad for, uh, for your platform. I'm so glad for mine having these conversations because you get an opportunity to see, and my, and my grandmother used to say, Baby, if you sit still long enough, whatever needs to be exposed, the sun will expose it. And I and, and I and you and I sat on these platforms long enough, and I've seen these women say, "Married, unmarried, about to get married." They're up there snapping their fingers. Yes, girl, you about to speak. They're saying, "Listen, we're individual women, mm -hmm. right?" A man, I'm all about. If, if Bloom and Ebony's still here, please come on back me up. I'm all about me. It's about me. I'm going to do whatever pleases me. When I get married, he's going to have to understand that I'm about me. I'm not about it. I'm not I'm about me. I'm a me person. If he can't understand that, he can move on. But it's about me. It's not about him getting what he wants. It's not about that. It's about me. And when you have women that think like that, I'm thinking to myself, good God almighty. Like I'm, I'm saying, whoa, this is what we, this is, this is what men are. And, and you are walking up on and trying to talk to and trying to and you should you you can see the faces of the other women that disagree like whoa that ain't gonna never happen but so, you know let me, let me tell you about that black man i'm gonna say this is me talking you know i could be so wrong about so many things and i'm sure i am i don't believe all that you know it's all good when you had somebody in your bed about a month ago but let about six months go by or a year or two or three that little conversation right there would change dramatically. Mm, for the worst, though. No, not for the worst. I'm talking for the woman because you know why? What is fly here? Kill I don't know. He got in here, but no. For the I'm saying for the worst, based on the fact that the longer you wait, the less possibilities you have. That's what that's what I keep trying. I, I had he's this not, conversation. He's not, they're not waiting. The possibilities are already gone. They're not waiting. The possibilities have passed by. And I just realized, see, mm -hmm. I thought I had control over the situation. I thought I was in control, but now I realize I'm not in control. And now the men are here and I, not here are not out there for me. And now I'm feeling it. And I promise you now y'all could women, if y'all are in the chat and y'all don't agree with me, please, when we drop the camera, come up and talk to me about it. Don't no woman want to be alone. Don't no woman want to be alone and by herself. Now they Dearly can, beloved. they can tell us that they do all they want to, but I don't believe it. I Look in the chat, it. huh? Look in the chat. You got a lady, young lady right here, saying, "Me, myself, and I." Listen, me, myself, and I. I need you to cam up. I need you. Don't no woman want to be alone or lonely for the entire du duration of their life? No, I don't believe it. We're not even made like that. We are from the man. Mm. 
We are from the man. Why wouldn't we want to go back to him? Now, listen, I can understand a bad relationship, what it could do to you. Now, I get it. But see, time heals all that good stuff. You know, time just heals it. You know, you get farther and farther away from it. You be wanting a man. You be wanting something to lay up under. I promise you, you do. And I'm going to give the secret from the from the man's perspective. When women say, why do men always going outside their race and messing with them, the white women, the Hispanic women, Asian women? Let me tell you what happens. Uh, security boss, have you ever gone to a restaurant with Mr. Boss and you had a horrible experience? Um, I can't say that I have. Okay. Let's hypothetically yeah, like the food was bad or something like that. Yeah, food bad, service bad, you know, bad, bad. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh host is bad, whatever. A lot of us as human beings, we can go to a red lobster on Lamar Avenue and have a horrible experience, and we won't go to the one. On Martin Luther King Drive, just because we had a bad a bad experience at Red Lobster Pier. All Red Lobsters are done. I'm not ever going back to Red Lobster. They food nasty. Their service is horrible. I'm not. That's what black men are doing right now. Black men are they have one experience, two experiences with black women, three experiences with black women, and they say, you know what? That that's that restaurant is serving bad food. I'm never going back there again. I'm going over here to another restaurant. I'm gonna go to Olive Garden. So black men, you know what? I hear what you're saying, and I can imagine that that might be the example for some, but I keep hearing that uh, black women are still uh, getting pregnant, pregnant and having babies. Who's impregnating, who's impregnating these women? Uh, it, uh, irresponsible. Irresponsible. I'm going to say it three times. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to do it consecutively here without stopping, without a pause. Irresponsible, irresponsible, irresponsible black men. <laughs> Okay, so, so we can agree that men are still checking for black women. Black men are yeah, still yes, checking for black but women. they're using them. That's what I'm saying. They use it even when you, God dog, even when you go and to do ex curricular activities. Even when you go to 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 go to uh, what's what's the name of a place everybody will know. Even if you go to Top Golf, they have policies on the wall what you can and cannot do when you come into their facility and use their tools. <laughs> you got to have the same thing with women. You got to have a policy for yourself. I'm not going to go in this woman without a condom on. I'm not going to go in there and have sex with this woman knowing that I can get her pregnant. Yes, I'm going to. And most men, let's just be honest. Most men are going to use women for extracurricular activities. Those men, when you do that, you got to be safe. You I wasn't I wasn't using that to, to have a class to make that type of point. I was just saying that black men are still checking for for black women. But, you know, it's, yes. It's, you know, it's definitely the proportions are definitely off if we have been. I think somebody just put in there what seventeen percent or eighty percent black men or black single women and seventeen percent whatever it was. But what I'm trying to say is this: we have to set examples for what we want because if not, everything still ends up in that same category as what you just mentioned: um, mm -hmm. men that don't want these women that they've been with. Because you just gave the scenario you gave, it wasn't an irresponsible man. But a year and a half later, he became a man that did not want to be with the woman that he impregnated, right? Yeah. I, and that's, that's the thing. You know what I wish we could do? I wish we can get a breakdown on the numbers of how many men, how many of those babies come from uh, one night stands. I mean, it doesn't matter. That's not my point. I'm just, I'm talking about people who are sincere about life. Mm -hmm. Who want to be married? I'm really not even talking about men or women that don't want to be married. I'm talking okay. about there are a lot of men out here, and I hear them often say mm -hmm. that they cannot find a good woman. They're, yeah, they're yeah. out there. I mean, say it again. I think they're out there, but I'm, 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 I'm gonna say it like this again. Anything that's that's worth anything is always covered. When you go find a diamond and a diamond, you didn't dug for a couple of days, dirt all over it. But once you clean it up real good, it's uh, anything that's worth any have any value has always been covered, and so you're not going to be at the club. You should not going to be at the club. Well, that's you not, bump, you not even, bumping to her at the, at the bookstore. But that's not even the point I'm trying to make, black man. The point I'm trying to make is we have to start setting examples for what we do want, because even those men that you mentioned that may be irresponsible, mm -hmm. those are those, they're real men too, and they may not be irresponsible all their life. They may just have had a bad night or been irresponsible at the moment, but even them, even they, some of them may want to be married. And if we can say, listen, uh, 
you have to set an example for what you truly want because the ex the scenario that you gave the young man left the woman after a year and a half because she was acting out okay right. so that tells me he didn't bother to set the example for that woman that was peaceful and cooperative or what ever that looked like a wife to him he was just doing something i'm trying to say it's time out for just doing something right I'm trying to say and women and that okay. you, i agree with you set that standard and do not move out of that square on friday i talked about women being wives becoming wives and, and positioning themselves clothing themselves in that in the air of being a wife so right now i'm telling the men i need y'all to set the example for the woman that you want so you can attract right. her and we don't have to worry about all these people that don't want that you know right. the, the ones that want to be in the club the one but see what i what, but see this is what i don't know you can help me out with this do men even do do men think they need to do this is this or do they feel like they are there's no changing or no uh mindset change or what have you that comes with a man when it comes to finding his wife or do you even think there is one? I, I think that I, I, I've never seen, and I heard Bolo say this. I've never in, in in a long time, I've never seen this many men wanting to be married. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I've never seen this many men in my life. I always thought men was gonna be just out here just playing the field forever, but these men actually want to be married. They want to have wives and kids, and and I've never seen it like this before. And uh, men want that, and now they're they're saying they want it. And a lot of men, like I said, have standards, and they don't move off of that. Uh, don't know big booty phase them. Don't know big breast phase them. You know, it's all about this. I agree. I think, they should. I think they should have standards, and I think the women should be, like I said, clothing themselves to to be wives. To to, to mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Positioning themselves to be those women. But I'm wondering. Excuse me. Are the men position themselves to be the husband to not necessarily be the husband because they want they're, they're on their purpose they want to be the husbands so they're leading but are they position themselves to get the woman that they actually want the the example of the woman i mean the example of themselves and for her to be the woman that they want you understand what i'm saying like uh are we willing as men men who are not yet married are we willing to give up the strip club right do we even think it's necessary you know, are we willing to maybe give up the Hennessy? Right. <laughs> you know, are we willing to to scale back on the boys nights or whatever? You know, I don't know. Just different things. Are we willing to position ourselves to be the example for the woman that we want? Because the reason why I always ask this question is because I know that when me and Mr. Boss got together, our minds was of like minds at the right time. Mm -hmm. But we found each other in the club. But when it was time for us to be married, the minds was right at the right time. We both were done with it. And I'm just wondering if 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 we know that that's what attracts, you know, if, if a leader knows that that's how he gets his woman. That's well, what well, watch this because women, well, women will follow you. Go ahead. Now, now, watch this. Watch this. Let's put some let's let's put some perspective. Let's put some uh, perspective on uh, on what you just said. Now, mm -hmm. you just said you found him at the club. Yeah. But when you found him. He was a working man. He wasn't at the club for that. He was at the club being a man. And listen, I'm going to put this thing together like a house in Missouri. Yep. Because you found this man at the club and what he was doing is what he was meant to do for you. He was covering the club and he found his woman. Come here. Come, I'm going to put this thing together like a house in Missouri. He was there to secure the place. But during his security, he found what it was that he was going to cover. Watch this. And, and within the time that y'all was together, how long did it take for y'all to get married? Go ahead and answer that question. But wait a minute, though. When he found me, he was working, but I was clubbing. And that, but, but but guess what? He showed you the example. What -uh, you just said. No, 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 no. I couldn't see it then. It was a whole year. Whole year went by. Not of dating, though. We did not date. Uh huh. Uh -huh. A whole year went by. Sorry, y'all. A whole year went by before we made acquaintance again. But when we made acquaintance again, then we were in the same spot. Now, at this time, it was, you know what? That club life ain't for us no more. This is, we, we're moving in a different direction, even Who though we were working, huh? Who said that? The balls. Come on. That's what I'm getting to. Come on. 
Go I'm, go. That's what I'm saying to you too. I, I'm agreeing with it. He started. He's the example. He was setting the example of what he was like. Hey, this is the way we're moving. That's the mm-hmm. point I'm trying to make. I'm just yeah. wondering if men understand that they set the example for the woman that they want, so they attract the woman that they who they are. They set the example. You're the example, black man, and your woman becomes a part of who you are. They we start to want the same things and and he sets the mold, you know, he you know, what if I'd have said to him, "No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, dude. I'm going to the club Thursday night cuz you know Friday night is women's lock up. Y'all know what women lock up right, is. Right, right. I'm going Saturday night too. And you know Sunday they be having them good wings. What if I'd have said something crazy like that? He'd have been like, "No, uh you ain't the one for me." Right. It would have been it would have been made so clear there wouldn't have had to be uh some good sex and and possibly a baby and then a year later I don't want her. It wouldn't have never been that way because he knew that if this woman don't fall on this plan, you know, this example that I'm giving, then we ain't gonna be together. So at the beginning of the show, hey, listen, let me tell you how God work over here. At the beginning of the show, what did I say? This is for somebody. Oh, you, you, okay. Wait a minute. We what said sometimes we have to hush. Yes. Uh huh. Because when we're quiet, that's when God the, the, is the most noisy and the most loud. Yes. Let's put this in your story real quick. Right. You just said, if I would have said this, he would have said, you're not the one for me. Exactly. But, God, but, but God said security was hush. God what? made the noise. That's her. That's her. He was dingling in the back of Mr. Boss. Hey, yeah. That's your wife. That's your wife. That's her. Get her. Yep. You hush, but I'm going to make some noise behind this man's ear right here. I'm going to bring this together and look at you now 26 years later. Come on, somebody. Listen here. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. you I'm you gotta... agreeing with you. That's what I'm trying to say to you that when we do, we know how to attract what we want. Yeah. We no, that's what that's my point. I'm trying to make. Or do we or do we or or, or do we have our men or do the do we have a security boss right in front of us? And we're so blinded by what we've been through. That we can't see what God has put in front of us. We might pass right by it or vice versa. Women may be saying, I'm looking for girl. She could be walking down the sidewalk. Girl, I'm sick of these niggas. They ain't nothing. They get on my nerves. And she didn't pass by her husband. Well, you know, what? Right there. you know what? That could be true. But let me tell you something. Let me see this. Uh, Army vet. How are you, Army vet? It's good to see you here. L.A. I think security about scared to say she was a Christian woman. <laughs> how many <laughs> Christian women are out there? <laughs> <laughs> I am not scared to say any part of that. Let me just tell you something. I grew up in the church. If you haven't heard my story, oh, uh, yeah. I had, listen, it was a strange story though. Cause mama went to one church. Daddy went to another. Daddy never missed a Sunday out of church and neither did mom, but they never went to the same one. How about that? Wow. How about that? That's powerful. Ain't it? I, I, ooh, I, my pastor used to say something about that. I do too, but we ain't going to talk about it today. We ain't gonna talk about it. <laughs> but listen, I'm going to tell you and share with you what, the example I had in a husband, because seeing that I did grow up in church, look, I grew up in them times when we used to have camp meetings. Did y'all know a thing about camp meetings? I ain't meaning to tell my story. Come on, that. come on. You remember the camp meetings with the yeah. little, ain't that something? I grew Man. up in camp meeting times. Good old days. Very dysfunctional. Primal studies, you hit it. I need a bell for you. Give me a bell. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I think I had one. Wait a minute. Thomas, that is you are exactly right. Straight dysfunction. Straight dysfunction in Jesus' name. How about that? It was yeah. well, but listen, when I met the man, I knew though I grew up in church. That was still who I was. But was I living that way? Absolutely not. Like, didn't I tell you I was in the club? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is what I was doing. I was a good time. Good time. That's what I was doing. But my husband. Like I said, he was the one, he was the example. And back then, women used to say, all they want is a man that loved the Lord. Mm. <laughs> and even though I was in the club, I still knew what was important. <laughs> and that was a man that loved the Lord. You, you took your God with you. It, 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 it went, yeah, he was right there. Protected me and kept me the whole Come time. On. But listen, so when it came time to let all that go, it wasn't even hard to do. <laughs> God had already loosened that from you that year. It took that year to do it. He broke you down over a year. Come sure on. Did. Sure. You say it again because it's so true. Because it, broke it, down. it took oh. him a pro- Yes. I told a man I wasn't ready for what he was ready for. I told him because I wasn't that, in initial the initial meeting. Mm-hmm. I wasn't ready. But guess what? That next one, I was very much ready. Yeah. And guess what? Like you said, 
we got married about 90 days after. Mm -hmm. We got and, married and about 90 what? days after. Yes. And, and, and people don't believe people don't believe how God works. And this is for the believers. I, I'm not trying to offend the non-believers. But even with my grandmother's story about my grandfather, when she said my grandfather would drink, go fight, get locked up, she had to go get him out of jail. He would just get drunk, blah, blah, blah. She said, I prayed for, she said, what I, I, what I did versus what you guys do now as wives was different. She said, I didn't fight with him. I didn't curse him out and talk down. She said, but I went down on my knees. She said, I prayed for my husband daily, every morning, every night, every morning, every night, every morning, every night. And she said, after about a year, two years, uh, after her praying hard, she said, it, it, just a little bit by a little bit, he lost his taste for alcohol. He lost his taste for the, he lost his, 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 uh, eagerness to go to the club. He didn't get locked up no more. He, he was at home more. He didn't go out with the fellas no more. Grandmother said, my prayers did that. Absolutely. She said, but if we don't have a, if we're not patient enough to pray, she said, then you'll end up sending your wife or husband away. I said, bars, grandmama, bars. <laughs> Listen, uh, OJ, OG, uh, Jay said, can you name one of them clubs? Let me think about one of them clubs. Uh -oh. Jay. Let me think of the oldest one that I can think of. I want to say, hold on. I guess the oldest one I can think of would be Kings and Queens. Kings and Dearly Queens. Beloved. I want to say Kings and Queens was Thursday night. Boy, wait a minute, wait a minute, kid. Why you went back a little bit? I, you had a flashback, nigga. You said you 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 was into the camera like this here. Then you said, "Let me think." You said, "Hmm." And then kings and queens here. You said, "Hmm." Kings and queens <laughs> on Thursday night. You start, rubbing your, you start rubbing your fingers together. I think that's what it was. Listen, <laughs> listen. But back then, we used to have a good time. We used to actually dance and have fun. There was no shootings or anything oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was none of that going on. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So anyway, this is my, this is what I'm talking about because I, um, so you ain't no, so you ain't no one to the executive club. I, I would say no, cause I don't know that. I'm not sure what that is. J speed. I'm sorry, but thank you for being here. I don't know anything about the executive club unless I'm, unless I'm just calling it all wrong, which it could be. Cause y'all you got to understand that's about what that was 27, 30 years ago, almost <laughs> it was almost 30 years ago, but the 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 exam the what I'm trying to say is that there's too many men that are saying that are experiencing that they are not finding the women they're not attracting the women that they want to be with, and I'm saying you must be that example for that woman that you want to be with. If it means giving up the nightclub, if it means that you can't get drunk on Friday night, if it means that you can't get high on Tuesday or whatever the situation may be, if it means preserving yourself, if it means going on a, uh, what do you call it when you don't have sex? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sex <laughs> you, you might have to save yourself for six months or something so you can, so your head can be clear, so you can see the woman coming or you can recognize her as she walks by. But all those things celibate, you have to do these things sometimes just to, uh, just to be the example for the woman that you want because i'm telling you if you bring someone chaos they're gonna be chaotic if you bring them sex they're gonna give you sex because remember remember i told you the woman you give a woman something she just most multiplies it <laughs> she multiplies it so you know keep giving to them and they're gonna continue to multiply so dearly beloved that is, go ahead no no i was gonna say what about the great men like these pastors or preachers or I'm not going to say all of them are great, but some of them, uh, let me give you an example. Pastor John Gray prayers out to him. Cause he's an ICU right now. What? But, uh, Why do you? Okay. You don't want to talk yeah, about that. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. He, so prayers out to his, him and his family. But when he was going through the situation with him and his wife at the church where he was sleeping around or having other women and he had a great wife and I don't think his wife retaliated in a bad way. I don't think she retaliated. I think she, she stayed like this. She, he brought chaos, right? They were together since they were youngins and he just went on his cheating tour. You know, um, I mean, what do you say to that? Like, what do you say to men that fall like that? What is your, what do, what do you say? I say that, um, when, when that happens and this is a real thing, we're real people. Uh, we're just losing our connection. You know, sometimes seeing creeps in. I talk about this all the time. I talked about it on your show the other night. Did I not? Mm hmm. We, we, we're we under the impression that it can't happen to us because we're married. He probably was under the impression it couldn't happen to him because he was a pastor, right? Right. It's a joke because women love power. 
a, a woman to go hard after a pastor because she loves the power and the charisma that they have. And he's a man. He's still a man. He was a man before he was a pastor. They'll get it. Listen, I used to work for a pastor. Uh oh. He used to tell me, I mean, it was almost so it had somewhat like an innocence to it. But he used to say, please, when such and such comes in, um, please be the door open and continue to walk up and down the hall. Mm. Because he did not want to be um, in that in in his office alone with that woman. You know, he didn't want to do it. He didn't want, he didn't want, he did not want the responsibility of pushing this woman away. You know, right. he didn't want it. And he already knew. So I'm, I'm assuming that at some point in time, she made him pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. So probably, he to, yeah. yeah. He used to tell me all the time. He said, please leave the door open. Call me. He would say stuff like, can you call me in 15 minutes and tell me somebody needs me or something just so he wouldn't be alone for a while with these women he would do it all the time so he's a man before he was a pastor men everyone men and women both get weak and when they yep. do things happen you let it creep in and you know women can be relentless when they want and what they want and then they'll sit back and they'll 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 make a joke of it you know they because you know some people don't care nothing about marriage you, we're learning that, right? They don't care nothing about marriage. So if I can't tell you, if I can't make it real to me and make you believe that my marriage is weird, real, you're not going to care anything about it. Right. So if I'm, you know, a man trying to talk to me and I'm talking back, he's not caring about my marriage because if I, if he cared or if I cared, he would care. But if I'm talking to him, he like, she don't care nothing about her marriage. So, hey, how about that? You know, so I'm going to see how far this goes. And, and Pastor Gray has fallen into those temptations quite often, I, I think. Yeah. I don't know how many times. But it always gets so terrible because I don't know why the women who are the side chicks can't respect this first lady. She didn't do anything, you know, and you're not doing anything either, you know, by sleeping with him. You're sleeping with him. You're screwing a married man that's a pastor and you want to just make him look bad and, and you win by making him do that. What exactly did you win? You yeah. still for the church. And she leaked the phone calls when he was saying that my wife can't cook. She don't clean up behind herself. You know, I, I don't get that. I, you know, I hate that men have to, um, you know, fall subject to that. I wish that when something like that happens, they could reach reach hold of their wife and be like, babe, I need you close because I'm feeling weak right now. I'm feeling tempted right now. This woman is after me. Please help me. Then babe, what, what, what can I do? What can I do? And then, you know, if we got to go get some counseling and we got to, you know, whatever we got to do, if we got to go on vacation to get the love back to where it needs to be. You know, like you say, make sure he don't leave home full, whatever the situation need to be. If we need to get it together, we need to get it together. We shouldn't allow our men to go out being able to be tempted like that. But it's up to them to stay connected. And all it is is that they're losing the connection, uh, the connection from the wife, from the father. You know, the spiritual connection is, is, is basically being diminished. And a lot of times that comes in because there's fame attached to having a mega church. You got how many people in the church on Sunday? What, five, six thousand people in there on Sunday morning loving you and praising you and telling you everything is good. And you got women. Women up in there undressing you like you a darn king. Yeah, you know, Joe Los Joe got nineteen thousand. <sighs> you know, so it's a it's hard <laughs> to be in those positions. Women love men in power, and, and especially if they got a husband and he ain't doing it at home. Especially, especially so. Men, y'all have to be very careful. That's why I tell, that's why I put, put out the women. My husband is not a pastor, but that's why I put, that's why I say what I do. Y'all, you going I'm protecting my union. I'm not going to let you creep in. Because, I, listen, I saw my mom go some, through some of this kind of stuff. The little side chicks come sit on the front porch with my mama. You know, they think it's all a big joke. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before she knew, you know, the game. I'm like, no, we're not, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be a part of that. We're not going to have that. Hey, Miss Gretchen, how are you? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, Miss Gretchen, oh, hey. can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? I can. I can. How you I doing? I can hear you. I got you. How you doing? Hey, how are you? Hello, Black. 
Hello, how are hey, you? Hey, Gretchen, what's going you? on? What's going on, girl? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good, thank you. I just have a hard time trying to stay cool. <laughs> I know that's right. You know, you know, Gretchen is in Texas. What part of Texas are you in, Gretchen? Houston. Yeah, I'm praying for you. It's hot. I know it's hot. As Woo! I, I, you know what? I seen hundred degrees. It's so hot in Houston. I seen a picture of the devil with a T-shirt on that said "Jesus is the way." <laughs> really beloved. <laughs> Mm -mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Gretchen. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It finally cooled off here. Um, today was one of the first days I was able to go outside. It's been a hundred here also, so you're right. It's terrible. It's what time is it? It is 7:51 here, and the temperature is 103. Now, yeah, you good now. You you good are. Now. But Gretchen, what you think about this? Do you think that um men should set the example for the kind of woman, or vice versa, the woman or man that they need to attract? Myself being a believer, I think we, as an individual, you have to be the person that you want to attract. Ask yourself, if you're a woman, if you want to attract a man, oh, let, me, let, me break it, let me break that back. Since I'm a believer and I want to attract a good man, I have to ask myself, am I a good woman to him? Am I the type of woman that... Uh, I mean, if I had my daughter, which I don't, I'm sorry. If I had my daughter, would y'all be, would y'all be um, the example? I'm trying to think of something. <clears throat> it's it's so good. I heard somebody say that if you want to be that type of person, you know, are you the type of woman that a woman that a man can can marry? This is what we use. And if, and if not, and if not. You got to work on yourself. But see, inside, from inside. you have to work on yourself inside out. Mm. So think of it this way. Um, would you date yourself? If you were exactly. yeah. you became a man or vice versa, if you the all the habits you have, the way you carry right. yourself, the way you speak and all that, would you date yourself if you were the opposite sex? Think exactly. of it. Exactly. Yeah, that's the word. That's the, that's the that's the phrase I try to get. That's the yeah, phrase I'm trying to get. That's a good that's a good measuring stick. Very good. So hold on for a minute, Gretchen. Uh, Mika, how are you? I can't hear you. You muted, honey. Oh. There you, there go. you go. There you go. How you been? I'm well. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. I am doing very well. Thank you. How are you? It's been a while. I know we missed you over here, but I've been seeing you in the chat here and there. Yes, I try to come back and drop love whenever I can. Good. Thank you. Um, for, for me, um, I think everything that people do should be intentional. And um, when I was younger, and apparently with my husband as well, when we met, we were both intentional and so you you attract what you put out there and the way you are and the way you present yourself is is what you're going to attract and if you want to see changes in the world you need to be the change that you want to see and um i'm been with my husband 17 years and married for 15 um and he's my second husband uh so i've been by the time i was 25 i was married twice and i think people should really reflect uh, early um, in life. And that's generally what I teach um, about like being, being intentional early, reflect early on in life about who you are, what you want and be intentional uh, about what you're going for and being representing yourself based on what you're thriving to have. For example, you know, I, I wrote down what I wanted, who I felt I was, uh, the type of partner I felt would compliment me. Um, and, how I felt we would kind of work together and what my intentions are, the type of characteristics I wanted. And I lived life based on what would be a good partner for him. And then he fell into my lap. He found me and pursued me and, and guided me. And I was led by him. Um, and I think that if I wasn't as intentional and aware and held myself accountable for the things I didn't pay attention to, I wouldn't have like, my husband and I passed probably would have never crossed if I wasn't open to it. 
like we did totally different things in life and the way we met was so weird um and it was just chance because we we did different things and so being intentional he was also intentional like he he always promote like ask the right questions and not be superficial ask the questions you really want to know the answer to um and you know when you're meeting people and you're asking questions if you're intentional you're really categorizing how they fit into your life and, and, and you're less likely to waste time with people who um, aren't what you're looking for, or aren't who you fit well with and just being open-minded, but you put, you get what you put out. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. So E-Man, how are you, sir? Frozen? Emmanuel. Can you hear me? He's frozen. Dr. Steele, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing fine. And you? I'm very good. Very good. What do you have to add to this conversation? Well, before you, know, you, you ask yourself, you know, are you attracting um, who you want? First, you have to ask you, are you real with yourself? You know, when you go out in these dating stream, go out in the dating world, you, know, you have to be true to who you are because... I can remember back in the days, I think this might be might be the situation now. There are some men who are trying to um, be something other than who they really are to try to get validation from women. And personally, I didn't want to do that. You know, my, my thing is this. If you have to perpetrate the fraud um, <laughs> in order to get validation from women, or if women have to perpetrate the fraud to get validation from men, that person's not for you F-man at all because you know you know when you perpetrate the fraud like that you're going against you know what you believe in or what your own values are okay and yeah you do sort of attract um, what you are but um, but you know everybody you having you know. Everybody have in their heads, you know, what they want in their heads. And the reality is, you know, it's not going to be perfect. So what you have to do is see, see who's attractive to you. And once, once you find out who's attractive to you, that's when the vetting process begins. Okay. Mm. To see if, if if uh, you are attractive to her, if not, um, well, there can be other options out there. You don't know how many other options you have, but as I found out a few days ago, you have other options. Mm. So, Mr. Steele, would you, um, Dr. Steele, would you date yourself? I would, yes. Oh, that's good. No thought. No, you didn't even think about that twice. So that was good. That was very good. Emmanuel. Yes. Can you hear me now? I can. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Um, you said something that, that um, almost made me jump out of my out of my seat. So I, I, I just got to ask this question. It ain't, too ask this question. Jump out seat. it ain't too late for you to jump out your seat. Go ahead and jump. So, so you made this statement, and I want to ask both the women on the panel. You said in men in power. So in business, you have power, especially when you start talking about indirect sales, right? Mm -hmm. um, once you start becoming a trainer, um, like the company, I'm a trainer for a company, right? Mm -hmm. And so you made a statement. You said, "Hey, um, once you get power, women want you," right? And then you say men should not. Men should not um, fall. What what you were saying, I, I, I'm I'm not quoting you directly, but I want to get to the point. What you said was a man should be able to go to his wife and talk about that he is tempted by this woman. Do you believe women um, receive that information correctly? Um. Yeah. If it's if it's given correctly, definitely they would receive it correctly. If you're saying to your woman, now listen, I'm not saying wait for the woman to touch you before you go say something. Uh, women know and men know, you know when somebody's coming on to you. It could be a look. 
you if you're looking at a woman and your eyes connected for too long you know that was not the right thing to do you can go share that with your wife you can say look for whatever reason i looked at her too long i'm not feeling whatever you can share any part of that because you don't want to fall to the temptation of that woman and it's a real thing you don't want to wait till that woman start running her hands up your thigh you know you stop her but still well, now you I, I get that point. The point that I'm asking is, I don't think that if women understood the temptation that men of the men in power get, uh, I don't understand. Can women really process that from a mental point of view of, in that transparency? Because especially when you start talking about a past of 19,000 churches, it might be thousands of women. And what I have seen men in men in power, women start saying, hey, you should leave the church. Like their wives start trying to get them away from that temptation, away from their purpose, away from their passion. I'm saying, I just don't understand how do that conversation happen without you losing your purpose? Yeah. So this is how it happens. Remember I said in marriage, your daily goal is to become one flesh with your husband, with your spouse. And if you work at that daily, you know, I know when my husband is out of order, you know what I'm saying? I know when he's not feeling good. You know, he may not be hurting. I know when something's on his mind or whatever. I may not know what it is, but you have to have these tough conversations and you have to have a woman. Your woman has to be wise enough and mature enough to handle these conversations, especially if she has a, a man that's in power. A man where many women would drop what they'll put their undies in the darn collection plate if it if they knew it would get his attention. We can't play like this is a game. Your marriage is not a game. Your marriage is very serious. And we need to treat it as such. So often we are treating it like it's a game. Like, oh, he's married. He's a pastor. He won't do. Oh, yes, he was because he was a man first. But we have to protect him. And typically pastors have all uh, yes people around them. Now, I'm not saying this is going to prevent him from doing anything. But I bet you if he's the type of man that would check in with his wife and tell him how tell her how he's feeling, he probably will not succumb to the temptation. But this is something he has to want to do. You know, you got to keep him. He has I to stay grounded in the journey. faith, right? That's his purpose. You know, he's not losing his purpose due to the temptation or due to the woman knowing about it. He's losing his purpose because he's becoming disconnected from the creator. So is the losing of the purpose has nothing to do with the temptation per se. Because, you know, the temptation is going to be there. He's got to know when to uh, <laughs> he's got to know that when to check in with this other half and be like, look, you know, this is happening. And guess what? He may have to take a sabbatical. He may have to go somewhere and go into deep prayer. He might have to find his way over there to Jerusalem or whatever he has to do to get connected because he's losing the connection and he's um, buying into the fame or buying into, you know, the camaraderie of the he's the king. He's the greatest. Right. He's got to get that connection back. But the wife has to be sincere enough with what's going on and smart enough to know, OK, this is a big deal. I can't let this happen to my husband, whether she got to pray over him, uh, stay connected to him, talk to him about it. Let's talk about this. What's going on? Why are you falling? Where are you? Where are you? What are you missing right now? What what can we do? And Man. you know what? he can't have a whole bunch of yes men around him. He got to have somebody he's accountable to security boss. I want to add to what you said. So before you go, I'm going to add. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What happened is he had, he, had, he had the stove. He didn't see, he left his phone in the car. Oh, I bet you over that with oh, your member. There we go. Like, see? It gets thrown in your face. Like if you start being vulnerable, it's going to get thrown in your face. And then once it gets thrown in your face, like, oh, I bet you cheat with this. I, I bet the gym. What you talking about? I'm cheating with this, that, and the third. Like, I think for not all, but for majority of people, it just start getting thrown in their face if they start. Bolo TV slash The Village joined. Now, now I agree. Now, I agree. Hold on for a minute. Uh, e man, I don't agree with that because I outlined the wife that I told you that could handle that. Because that's also the husband that is checking in with the wife. Now, you got two different people. You got a husband that's receiving all the temptation, receiving the calls, that's giving out the emails, that's accepting the rugs and the hugs. And then you got another one that is fearful of the father of Christ 
and um, doesn't want to be off his purpose. And he's the one that's checking in with his mature wife that's real about the marriage and telling him, look, you've been ready to fall off. You got to get connected. Those are two different type of men, two now, different now, type of men. Now, security boss, you know, I'm from the dirty south. And where the, where the preachers come eat chicken and lay hands while the husband at work. Watch this. Now, I've I've heard a preacher. Right. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, but I, I, I've I, a preacher and his wife. He was a good. This this one was pretty. It was a good guy. Him and his wife. There was a woman at the church that wanted the preacher, and I, I mean, she wanted him, and everybody knew it. And after he went to his wife and and spoke with his wife about it, I know this because he confessed to the church what happened. So he his wife found he went told his wife this woman is very aggressive. Um, she's coming at me. She coming at me. She don't care about you. She don't care if I tell you whatever. One Sunday after he told his wife, he said after he told his wife, his wife started to get real uncomfortable with the lady because the lady was still coming around to shake hands during communion. She was still coming around and 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 hug him, you know, and he wouldn't do that in front of the sanctuary, in front of the church. So he would try to keep himself as a, at a distance. One Sunday he got up in church and he said, I want to say to the church that I love everyone here. I love the ministry. I love the, the members. I love what we do for the community here. He said, but there's someone here that desires to have me as my wife has me. And he said, I've spoken to the young lady and she continues to pursue. Williams, my wife has become very agitated. And he said, I've gotten to a point that I have to put my wife above everything else. This will be my last Sunday as your, as your senior pastor. Absolutely. Because, because his wife, right? His wife didn't want to be in that position. His wife didn't want to be in a position where she had to look at these women every Sunday. Well, you know, either you put them out or you, or you remove yourself. You got to yep. make that grown up decision. I don't see anything wrong with that and at he all. Removed himself. That's how it should be done. He was there for 23 years. You can't play with it. You're not supposed to play with things like that. I mean, that's, that causes men to fall. That, that's, that's a very dangerous area, but I seen you little podcast. How are you doing today, sir? Are you you're, muted, guy. You're whispering so we can't hear you. <laughs> That's better, Mar how are you doing? Doing well. Bolo TV, how you doing, sir? Take that white socks head off. So how's everybody else doing? Everybody's doing good, I think. But we're going to go over here to say little podcast. What do you think about this? Because listen, do you attract what you want? You know what? This message was for you today. I didn't even know. I was, I didn't even realize it. No. I was, it was, it was kind of for you. I didn't realize it until you just popped up a second ago. The, the okay. original message that we want. Yeah. Um. My first initial thought is no. Right. Um. But probably, I think it's is I think it's more complicated. We like in conversations, especially on these panels, we try to simplify things, right? Just to move the conversation forward. And I understand that. But like I gave you an example, and I'm gonna try not I'm gonna try to put it in the nicest way I can, but you know I'm transparent, so I gotta be honest. So I remember thinking that if I had a woman who was sexually submissive, right? Um I would be able to work out anything with her. All right, so that's all I really wanted. As long as she's sexually submissive, we can get past everything else. I mean, nobody's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be complications and everything. You know, you live with somebody long enough, they get on your nerves. You know, it's all the regular stuff that everybody go through in a relationship. However, one of the issues that I never wanted to deal with was a sexless relationship or marriage. And so I always just figured if I got somebody that was sexually submissive, I'd be all right. And then I got that, right? So that, that's the part of attracting what you want. I got what I wanted. I didn't even know it was coming, but I ended up getting it. It wasn't into later, years later, that I realized like, I realized, like, yo, I actually asked for this. Like, I beseech the universe for this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got exactly what I wanted, but. But. <laughs> there we go. Right. Yeah, but when we're dealing with people, right, it's different. Right. You can yeah. say, Man, I want a car and I want my car to have leather, sunroof, wood grain, this and then you get it and it'd be all you want. And then after some time, it might not mean as much to you. But when you're dealing with a person, you're dealing with behaviors. 
right? So there's some things that's going to come with these things that you want out of people that you might not necessarily be thinking about. So this person that's sexually submissive, probably gonna have more of an attitude. I like the girls with the big booties, probably gonna have more of an ego because they're getting hit on more often than not because they have big booties. You see what I'm saying? So it's a lot of things that we just don't consider when we're, when we're assuming we want what we want, right? But then I think there's another component to this, which is sometimes without even trying, you attract who you are more so than what you want. Okay. That's so, what we said, actually. It was just a, it's just a twist on words. It, that's exactly what you do. You attract who you are. Right. And so uh, <laughs> full transparency, I had a conversation with my mom a couple of years ago and she was saying how, you know, I should have never got with your dad and he was beneath me. And I'm like, no, he wasn't. Cause if he was beneath you, he wouldn't have never been able to get with you. You all were in the same place, right? So he, he was beneath you. You want to say you made a mistake? I'll take that. But he was exactly aligned with you or he wouldn't have even been able to be in your presence. He wouldn't even, he wouldn't have even, even been able to be in your space. I don't believe that we can get things that we don't deserve or we're not worth. I just don't believe that. I believe everything we get, we get because we are attracting it to ourselves somehow, some way. But that does not mean that we are responsible for other people's behavior either, though. It does not mean that, right? So I know I'm, a, I know I'm broken. I'm willing to admit I'm broken for all of the men that are afraid to admit they're broken because they think it's somehow going to dry up their phone books which I don't really care about that. I got a woman, so I don't care about having a whole bunch of women, right? So I can admit I'm broken. I'm anxiety, depression, PTSD, uh, 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 mama issues. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I got a lot of stuff that I deal with on a daily basis. And I got a woman that's just as broken as I am. The only difference was she didn't know it because she didn't realize the things that she was doing in her behavior were things that she built up in her as defense mechanisms against what she was going through growing up. Now you're perpetuating it and you think, well, this is just who I am and it's just a part of my behavior when it's not really that. You're still defending yourself against things that you think are attacks, right? Especially when I'm trying to correct her. You know what I mean? Oh, she sees that as an attack. No, it's not an attack. I'm only correcting you because I care, because I love you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't say nothing. I'd just get the jaws and be gone. So I think it's twofold. Like you said, it's a play on words, but I'm so literal, uh, security boss. I'm so literal, right? When you say attract what you want and attract who we are, those two different things for me mentally, right? So I think both can be true at the same time. And I think it's it's like everything else. You, you, you just, you're working against both of them. You see what I'm saying? You're trying to get what you want and you're attracting who you are at the same time. And sometimes our ego won't allow us to accept that we have invited this person and what they bring into our own lives. And so, I, and also I want to say this real quick and I'll be quiet. Uh, I'll, I love you in a very platonic way. You know, I'm always bragging about your skin, but come on now. You know, we can't go to our wives telling our wives about what no other women feel about us. And it'd be okay after that. Never. Like, you you got to listen to the men on this one. You may say what you expect from the women, but you got to listen to us when we tell you about our experiences. That has never, ever, 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 ever worked out for me. And I'm very <laughs> transparent. Now, now secure about before you cook, because I know you're about to cook real hard. Before you cook, can I respond to Mr. Podcast? Yes. Mr. Podcast, you had a very interesting um, monologue there, sir. And I wanted to respond to that by saying this. What you said was absolutely 100% true. But I want to encourage you to, uh, to this. And this is for everybody that's watching. We said this earlier in the show. You can't change anyone. People are who they are. And I think a lot of times with us men, uh, I'll talk about us men tonight. Where's I think that we try to get with women and when they show us who they are, we try to mold them and shape them into something that we want them to be and not realizing that we can't change anybody. She's going to be that. Now, what you will do with a woman, you'll suppress her. 
And when you suppress a woman, you'll suppress what it is. That's why you have so many divorces. And you say, damn, that one was quiet and quiet while she was with Lip Podcast. Now she ain't with Lip Podcast. No more, man. She throwing that coupe from the free throw line. She at the club. She with this dude, that dude. You know why? Because you suppressed who she was. You tried to make her who you wanted her to be. And she just said, okay, I'll let him do this. But when she got out away from you, she became, she went right back to who she truly is. Now, another thing, when you said about preparing yourself and getting what, what you attract yourself to, my thing is this, there's a broken down car in your yard and you're saving up money to buy a new one, right? You're saving up money to buy a new one. And you say, mama, I'm buying me a new car. I'm saving up every day to buy this new car. And you finally get the money. Your mama said, you can't bring that car here. And you say, mama, why I didn't save the money up? She said, because you ain't removed the raggedy one that's in the, in the driveway yet to bring in something new. What we do is we, we stay raggedy, but we always want to bring in something new. We got to remove what's broken and replace it with something new. And what that new looks like is therapy, not being broken, because like you just said, you're broken, right? Brokenness attracts brokenness. Right. And so now both of you are broken together. Now broken China's all over the kitchen and, and nobody knows how to put each other back together. So now you have to figure out, hey, I need to find a way to put myself together. And when you get yourself put back together in the podcast, you may see things differently. You may be in a whole nother atmosphere than where you are right now. You may do something completely different. I mean, relationship, anything will be different. The doors of the church is open. <laughs> so I want to say this to our little podcast and all the men and women that are in the chat. If you're in a marriage relationship or if you're in a sincere relationship that looks like it's going or headed towards marriage, if you're not in a position where you are today that you can teach, that you can say whatever you need to, to say to that woman or that man, you need to work towards that because mm -hmm. the goal is for you and that man or woman to become one. And what that means is that you are her and she is you. And if there is something that is tempting or breaking you down or has a hold on you, it should also have on her. And the goal is to, for you all to get to get through it together, not to be individuals. If you want to be married to a person, you're no longer an individual. You have a marriage mindset and your, her well-being is just as important as your own. Actually, they also look alike. So I don't care how much it hurts, aggravates, irritates. Uh, whatever, she's got to grow up. And she's got to hear that this woman is looking at my husband or my man inappropriately and he's feeling a little uncomfortable and she has to give thanks to the the man that she has for coming and telling her that this is going on. Dearly beloved. Now, security boss, can I ask you a question? But wait a what second. You... And then it needs to be checked. Okay. It needs to be checked. Now, for me, it's, it's, it's real easy because I, I got a good looking husband and he's a good man. So if, if, if somebody's making him uncomfortable, I need to know if I if I see somebody that even I think might be making him uncomfortable. I'm like, baby, did you see that? She touched your shoulder a little too long. What you think? And he'd be like, baby, I ain't paying no attention. OK, well, we're going to pay attention for you. <laughs> that's the kind of Dearly stuff beloved. I'm, I'm, that's what i'm saying see we take these relationships too easy we just like it's just nothing you know i want my relationship to be forever you know he's the only one 20 going on 27 years in november i don't want to um ruin this or have this become you know just nothing you're gonna have to go do all this again so knowing that i want that i'm gonna protect this at all costs so I don't know why y'all don't think that way about y'all relationships. I don't know why it's so, ah, well, she's not going to tell me what's going on. And then you be sneaking out at night because this woman smell good. Or she be sneaking out at night because this man smell good. That's, that's, that's not what it's about. I mean, I don't want to live a life where I got to wonder uh, where my husband at. My husband come home from work. <laughs> I, don't, I don't wonder about him. You know, so it's, it's, it's all about how you make it. I, I'm just, you know. Yes, Can I sir. ask you a question? Yeah. Now, we, now, you and I shared a platform the other night. Yes. And you heard several women say that they 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 don't care. Basically, I don't. I listen to my husband. But at the end of the day, my decision is my decision. I'm going to do what I want to do. Now, what do you what what advice do you give to the men who are married to women like that? That say. Um, you know, that say, hey, listen, oh, she, oh, she talking to you. Hey, okay, quit your job. You don't work there no more. 
Well, it's just like, no, it's just like what you said. No, you don't have to quit your job. It's a way to, to get a woman off your man or vice versa. You let them know you're not playing this game. You're not sneaking in. You're not coming in the back door. We know who you are and we see what you're doing. So I need you to cut it out. And then she's not going to like that man no more because she only liked him when she thought she could get him. Now that she knows he's not falling for that game, then she don't want him anymore. She's going to move on to the next one. But what I would tell a man, you know, what I've been hearing um, is that, you know, I never even thought about the man not voicing how he actually feels is shaming him. I never thought about it like that because my husband and I don't play those type of games. So, you know, I hear him. I, I've gotten to the point where I hear my husband. So if you're not listening and the husbands are just, you know, letting it go, you know, husbands letting it go, you know, if they don't want their woman to go out of town and they say, babe, don't, and they don't say that they don't want the woman to go out of town. They're just cowering down. That's on that man. I, I, I want him to get his, get his footings and, and put his foot down and be like, you're my wife. And for whatever reason, I don't want you going out of town. And, and, and he needs to make that be what it is. And, you know, with conversation, try to help her understand that he cares about the relationship. He cares and love her. And we don't need to have these issues. I want you here with me. You know, I just don't think enough love is being displayed within relationships because I'm not trying to run away from my man. Right. But see, the thing was though, security boss, it said we're okay. This is the this is the thing for the for the people that, that actually watch what you're talking about. The the the, the ladies are saying we don't want to lose our individualism just because we're men. Listen, I had a whole show Friday night that said once you said I do, your your individualism turns into being a married woman. And exactly. A, and um, yeah. since I was made from a man, it's to, I said yes. I'm going back to the man, and now my 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 purpose is going to be within that man and in that marriage. I can have a job with my goals and my uh, my gifts or what have you, but I'm made for that man. And a wife is very pers- purposeful. Done correctly, it's very fulfilling. Also. So that's that's what we need to get women back to. We need to get women back to being fulfilled and being wives. And if it's done right, it's very fulfilling, you yeah. know. But if you ain't doing it right, then I could see why you might need the girls trip, where you might need um, why you might be bored or where you might be, you know, all that extra stuff. But see, I, I find whatever it is I'm looking for in the man that I'm with, because I am scared to death to be out there in this world and trying to find it there. So let's be clear. You're saying that if you get married, once you get married, those things that you did as a single woman, you cannot carry those over like PTO time at a corporate job into your marriage. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. No, <laughs> thank you. I not to, I wouldn't do it at all. So, but you know, I know you, I know you want to go to Bolo, right? I just want to say this. I, I think, and I think deep down inside that you might know this already. The mindset you have is not normal anymore. <laughs> it's it's just not like the the way the way that. Join. The majority, and I'm just speaking for our community, but I'm not shooting at black women. It's the only community I know about. But the mindset that they have about relationships and marriage is just not the same. There's not this whole thing of this is the one I want, and I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose him. Like, I mean, I've had I've had yes. a few women in my lifetime, and it, it was never really. Yeah, you see some of the jealousy, this and that. Like even with the the the, the example that you used, right? I was in a situation like that before where I told my lady that one of my boys' wives had called me because something was going on at their house. She inboxed me on Facebook first and was like, hey, I'm trying to get in touch with my mom. Her mom was really old. Her mom was answering the phone. Can you go over there and check on my mom for me? No problem. I'll go check on for you. Boom. Go over there. Not mom. Okay. Everything is all good. All right. Cool. Yeah. You all good? Yeah. I'm all good. Woo. That's it. My lady got home. Hey, babe, man, you know. Such and such wife called me, uh, inboxed me, and then asked me to call her. Hey, lost her mind. Why is she inboxing you? Now, nah, see, because you've been holding a relationship with her and keeping it secret from me. Well, why does she feel comfortable inboxing you? Well, why does she feel comfortable asking you That's to call her? That's the question her? they're going to ask, brother. But here's the truth of the matter, though. Here's the truth of the matter, security boss. I know where all that came from. You know where it came from? Yeah. Because there oh, was plenty of men in her inboxes all the time, every day. Good morning, queen. How you doing, my love? What's up, melanin goddess? She was getting all of that. Wasn't telling me about it, right? So don't, soon as she's seeing that I was getting some, now you insecure. Now you feeling away, right? Because you don't want me to be doing this thing that you know you getting away with, even though I wasn't. 
So she did, after a few weeks, come back and apologize. You know, women don't apologize like the next day. Or yeah, they need at least 72 hours. Right, they need at least 72 hours. <laughs> but listen, um, the part that we're missing, the part that we're missing is that we just take our relationships too lightly. We take the marriage relationship as just a piece of paper or a contract or what have you. It doesn't have any spiritual sure. background or no, there's no coming together with the person. Nobody's taking it serious. That's why you can do and say all those things. That's why nobody takes it serious because it's not serious. If you want that type of relationship, you pour into the person that you're having this relationship with. You make that person your 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 idol or not idol, but you you know you you love that person. God is your idol, so let me make sure y'all understand that. But that's the person you check in with. You don't be checking in with other women. She does the same for you. You check in with her. You let her know that she's special to you, and then she re in returns lets you know that you're special to me and that's the bound that's the foundation of a relationship you all are just having relations y'all ain't building no foundation but if you, you want to do my it, head or something you, you have to have a foundation and it goes back to something that you said a moment ago um i forgot what it was but it's all it all comes with a foundation if you pouring into somebody and you telling them what you want from them and y'all are working towards the same goal then for you to come to her and say, listen, this person has been clocking me like crazy. I don't know why she's calling me or what have you. Then let me tell you how good it can be. You can have the same Facebook as your husband and wife. You can have the same Instagram as your husband, wife, and it's okay. Phone rings, babe, you get it. Here, hear my phone, baby. It, it could be just like that. What are we hiding? Yeah, what are we hiding? But see, y'all not willing to give up that life. Because maybe you're not thinking that this is this is all for me or this is good enough for me. So you 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 playing single in a relationship, and that's not how it's supposed to be. But you know, you live and you learn, I suppose. But it all depends on what you want. It all depends on what you want. You want a national brawl, security boss? This is what we should encourage people to do. In order for you in, for the people that are trying to get married, I'm not trying to be funny here. It's gonna be funny though. Uh if all the people that are wanting to get married for 24 hours, go to your spouse and do it just in the instant don't tell them don't warn them go to your spouse and say let's switch phones for a day see how many relationships you'll have tomorrow my woman can have my phone and my computer it don't ring <laughs> wait, wait a minute y'all so so listen mika mika i know we're busy a lot of people coming into the chat but i saw here you had a comment go ahead and share your comment oh which comment uh, God, I don't know. Uh, you were responding to T. Shaw, so I guess we have to go back up and get T. Shaw's. I don't remember. Our insecure. Um, Who's insecure? Um, explain, us, explain to us what you're saying. So, um, T. Shaw was saying that women who um, requires uh, their husband to like leave a job when women oh, gotcha. are after them um, are insecure and ask me what I thought. Because I thought she was saying women who husband communicate with them and tell them about what they're feeling and what they're going through was insecure. And I was like, maybe I missed it because I love clarity. <laughs> so she was explaining to me what she meant by that. And she asked me what I thought. And I, I, I try not to, I, I can't speak for an entire group of people to indicate some aspects is insecure. I know that my husband works around people all the time and women fall all over him everywhere he goes. I've never asked him or felt that he needed to quit his job, but again, is not a similar situation as being a pastor of a mega church either. So I can't really speak for a situation I've never been in personally. I never felt the need to tell my husband, well, I don't trust you and you're my, you're my king and you're the head of my household and you run my kingdom. You should quit because you have to beat him off with a stick. That has never came across my mind. So for me personally in my relationship with my king, I wouldn't, I never had a need to tell him or felt a need for him to leave, but I can't say women who do are insecure or not. You're right. I, I never had that either. Was I, I always feel like if a man puts a woman in her place, she's that's where she is. But a mega church yeah. situation, you're exactly right. That may be different, but I would say being the uh, pastor of a mega church, he should be able to say, get out <laughs> because you, you're not right. You're not good for this. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to be a part of this flock. So, you know, I don't know. But Love C, how are you? We coming to you next. And Bolo, I think you're the next. And Janae, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Go ahead, Love C. Hey, good evening, everybody. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for coming up. I need to say that. Thank you so much for being here. 
Um, oh, this is a good topic. Um, I like the phrasing that you attract, you attract your mirror to you. Because yes. sometimes it's not always like, I, you're one way and they're the other. Sometimes you attract your compliment. I feel like you attract your compliment a lot of times when it's um, a positive attribute. Like if I'm a spender, they might be a saver. And so then you, you ultimately balance each other. But I think what I've found in areas where you tend to be um, broken or having room for improvement or the areas where I felt like I needed the most um, improvement I attracted my mirror. So if you have, um, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Let's say that you have um, issues with being, um, setting boundaries and you, you have, you, you let people walk all over you. You don't set clear boundaries. You don't tell people what's acceptable and what's not. You'll attract a person that lacks respect for boundaries. So you'll attract the type of person that'll walk all over you. And they, they, they're attracted to you because a person who will walk all over you is the kind of person who doesn't want to um, have a boundary. They don't want you to tell them, you know, no, I don't accept that. So in a way you, you, it's like a, how they call it like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So now you have somebody and you're like, oh, she's, doing this she's doing that she's disrespectful you know he talks to me any kind of way he's looking at girls while we're out you know he's doing all this kind of stuff but then when somebody says to you well why don't you leave or well why do you accept that then she's like well you know he um there are some good things about him and those things can be true but really the lesson in it is for you so if you reverse engineer that and say you know what they're not all around a bad person but what I have to do is I have to say what I am or I'm not willing to accept. But sometimes we're afraid of the rejection. We're afraid that maybe they won't honor our boundary or maybe they won't respect us. And so we don't set the boundary, but we don't honor our own selves. And so when you don't honor yourself, you attract people who dishonor you. So it's kind of like you attract that mirror image to you. And if you, I think if you are in a good relationship, those things help you. You can, not if they're disrespectful, but they can help you to build, you can build off of them. You know, you can grow because those are weaknesses in a safe environment where someone can tell you like, I feel like you have trust issues and I have not given you a reason not to trust me. Maybe in your past, you've had people who broke your trust. And so then you meet somebody and they're trustworthy and you're projecting your insecurity onto them. And sometimes that person can walk you through it to the point, if you're ready to do the work, they can be patient with you where you can say, you know what, this isn't that person or that situation. And now it's on me to treat you as though you haven't broken that trust and, and 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 be that way. So I think you do attract those people to you, but it's a decision that you um that you have to make to either grow or draw that line and and not blame the other person but realize this is actually a, an opportunity for me to grow and become a better person. And I feel like that's what happens in relationships and marriages. You see the side of yourself or that person that no one else gets the opportunity to see. And you can either choose to roll up your sleeves and work with them, or you can say, this isn't what I signed up for and, you know, move on. Very good. It does. Because anytime that you can um, be honest with a person, it does make you closer to them. So that was one thing I did want to say too, even in these relationships where they may not lead to um, marriage or what have you, I still advise everyone to be honest because I think um, lies cause lies, telling lies, being deceiving, deception causes trauma. If you tell a woman you don't want her or you uh, go in saying, you know, look, I just want to sleep with you and she goes along with it, that's not a problem. But if you tell a woman that you love her and you want her to have your baby just to sleep with her. And then she ends up getting pregnant, having your baby. And then you gone. That's straight Not trauma. Could have been avoided. Could have been avoided. But Janae, how are you? We're going to go to Bolo and then we're going to come right up to you. Bolo. What's going on, guys? How's everybody doing? Hey, man, what's going on? 
going good. What you got to add to this, Bolo? Because somebody's getting ready to take your take your spot. <laughs> 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 like man, yeah. Uh, first, I want to say good. Um, I mean, I think uh, I think her name is Love C. I think Love C w was on it. I think it's easier said than done, right? We, we we all give solutions, and a lot of the times the pushback be how do we get there? The pushback is you know how do we get to that, that position? But the answer, you know, uh, I seen. Your little podcast said something that was real important when you said he's broken. And a lot of the times you have people that trauma bomb. And, you know, we, we spoke about that in, in uh, very deeply, I think, the last time we were up here. We have to understand that when it's talking about relationships, your vibe attracts your tribe. So if you're attracting certain types of people, it's because that's the vibe you're putting out. And we have to understand that, right? A lot of the times we don't take the time to grow. We rush into relationships and we mm. try to figure out, not on a man's perspective, right? When I was younger, I rushed into relationships and tried to figure things out as I'm in the relationship. Mm -hmm. It don't work that way. I didn't take the time to really figure me out, right? To understand who I am as a man and what my intentions are, what my focus and integrity is. So, I always use this example, and I know black men gonna get on me, but I'm gonna use it anyway. You have that diamond that's worth $100 million. The only way you knew it was worth that much is from you getting it checked, from you doing the clarity and getting the origin and all these different things so that when you do finish doing the math on it, you know now it's worth 100 million. You ain't taking no shorts on. So once you know the worth, you now can demand the value. So now once I knew my worth, I demanded my value and my standard. And if a woman didn't meet my standard, I moved on. I was patient. My my need became what my wants were. Let me say that again. My need became my want. A lot of us have it backward. A lot of us pick these women in far as want. You don't pick what you need. Because what you need is that woman that's gonna pray over you. What you need is that woman that's gonna multiply. What you need is that woman that is going to follow. What you need most of all is that woman that's connected to God. A lot of our relationships are built on you and I. And that's why they fail. It's built on you and I. When you build that ceiling above you and it's just about you and your woman, you're going to crash and you're going to fall. When your building is bigger than you, our focus is the Father. Our focus is him. Our relationship is secondary to the relationship that we have with the father. Marriage is the only time one plus one does not equal two. It equals one. Bond of my flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. When I see her, I see me. And this is how we need to move. However, a lot of us are getting into relationships at a young age. And don't understand what their intentions are. Don't understand the focus and the connection that they have with the father. Because here's the thing, right? We always quote this scripture. When a man finds the wife, he finds a good thing. We always quote that scripture. Right? It's been quoted up here. But the crazy thing is, the only way that man could have found a good wife is if he was a good husband. <laughs> this is what we don't focus on. We tend not to go that part. We always tend to understand that part about the woman. But if she's getting, if you're getting a wife, what is she getting? She's supposed to get a husband. So the work is supposed to be done on both ends. So when she becomes that virtuous woman of Proverbs 35, that's a response. Love mm -hmm. is an action word. People need to understand that, right? The way my brother black man loves me, there's a reason. He didn't just wake up one day and say, I love Bolo. There had to be action behind it for him to say, that's a good brother. Let me tell you why. And vice versa. That's a good brother. Let me tell you why. Because when I was down and out, he did this, he did that, such and such and such. Virtuous woman was reciprocity. Hmm. The reason why she submitted to that man, because first of whom he represented. That's why. See, this is why, you know, people call me simp and all these things, because it's simple. We make it hard and understand this. 
when the Lord told a woman to submit to your husband in everything, he didn't say some things, he said everything. We all know that scripture like the back of our hands. No one has to break that scripture to nobody down on this panel. But here's where things go left a little bit. Christ came back and said, husbands, love your wives like I love the church. Now, why did he say that? Because the Lord deals with the men. We all know that, right? He tells you the tabernacle of God is with the men. It's not with the women. So the men are Christ's wife. He is the systematic example of what a husband should be. Patient, providing, nourishing, uh, sacrificing, all these pillars that we have. So when he said to his wife, love your wife the way I loved you, don't be impatient. Doesn't mean you don't check her. Doesn't mean you don't rebuke her. Don't be so quick to do what you did with Moses. Don't be so quick to give her that bill of divorce. Because remember, the law of Moses, the Levitical law only shaped you. It didn't save you. Because if it did, then we wouldn't need Christ. Christ saved you. And this is what we have to understand. Understand what your position is as a man. Once you understand what your position as a man is, I am not taking no shorts. If you can't give me what I want, then I'm going to move on to the next. I don't need to, 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 to short myself because I think that I'm not good enough. This is why we pick the women or pick the men that are not good for nothing. This is why you go trash dumping. Because in your heart, you look at yourself as trash. Mm. We do quality on us than we do quality in us. Um, put more time on us than we do in us. We don't take the time to get to know who we are as men. Um, we have these brothers that come back and mentor. All these men on this panel, this is what they do. We need more of this. But so wait a minute, Bolo. Bolo ain't gonna see. I, hear some, I hear some noise in the background. What is that I'm hearing? Is that is that you, black man? Mm-hmm. What's, your, what's wrong? You got your bathroom? Now, Bolo, I was riding with you until you passed by the police and didn't pull over. See, but now I had to jump out because let me tell you what happened. Don't jump out. Slow the car down first. Let, let me let me let me tell you what happened, Bolo. Slow down. Slow down. When we say when, now, the part that that really made me jump out the car was when you said that we are with trash because we see trash in ourselves. Now, right. I, I have to I have to push back on that because okay. some, because. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes, uh, Bolo, you can, you can, let me use this analogy. Lord, thank you for this one. Sometimes you can go to a dealership and buy a car and it can be brand new, a 2022, the Bolo Expedition. And you can get halfway down the, uh, halfway down the interstate, Bolo, and you can enjoy that car for a couple of days. And on your way to work, the third day of owning that car, the transmission can pop in it. The engine can go out. You know what they call that? They have a law for that. It's called the lemon law. Mm-hmm. Now, you never you know, know what that car is. You, ne- you never knew that that car, you couldn't see anything wrong with it. The test drive was good. It looked good on the outside. It felt good on the inside. But soon as you get off the line, the road, a couple of days later, you had to go down. back to the dealership and invoke the lemon law because you didn't know it would do it to you. But, Can but, I say something to you on that? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. That doesn't change. Oh, go ahead. Please let me respond. Here's the thing that black men you do all the time. You use something that is called the exception to the rule and you use it as the rule. How many Mm -hmm. cars do you take off the lot that's brand new and and the engine break down? How many? Several. Okay, not all. That's why they made it a law. Because a lot of people was getting screwed over. Bro, there's 8 billion people on this planet. How Do you think it happens 8 billion times? No. Okay, so Much my point to you is it does, it does happen. Mm-hmm. I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. It does happen. Sometimes it happens. We're talking about the law, the rule, not the exception, the rule. So if you want to talk about the exception, we can have that conversation and say, sometimes some women that men pick, they play the good game and they fall victim to it. I get it. The same thing goes for women. Sometimes they pick a man that played a good game and they find out two years later this dude lied. I get what you're saying, but this is not the rule. 
That's the exception. So you're a hundred percent with that. But I'm talking about the rule. Anytime we come on a platform like SB's or yours, we speak in generalities. That's what we speak in. Mm-hmm. We don't speak in specific. We speak in general. So in general, when you go out there and you know that this chick ain't worth it, and you pick her, well, let's say you didn't know she wasn't worth it. Who's to blame? If that woman picked the dude me- and didn't do homework, hold on, please. If she didn't do her homework and and was patient, not trying to rush, and she's missed something, that's on her. Because he was authentically himself. Now, can people slide through? Absolutely. I'll never tell you that vetting is 100%. No. What I'm going to do is, again, I want to make sure, because if I'm going to have a woman into my innards, into my spirit, I'm going to make sure that she's damn qualified. Period. Well, Period. Now, Bo- Period. Now, Bolo. Now, Bolo. Can I respond to him real quick? Uh, yeah, black go man? ahead, podcast. I can, I can simmer over here in the crock pot. Go ahead, before y'all do that, let me say this one thing. Unless I'm missing something, black man, going back to your analogy, that, that engine in that car was still trash. But you didn't see it coming. I didn't say you saw it, but it still was there. Yeah. It didn't change the fact that it was trash. You bought a brand new car. It still was trash. Mm-hmm. But you, but that's that's the point I was making. But that's what he's saying. You can make it up. It can look real good. You grow from it, black man. The point of the matter is exactly. I agree. No, 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 no. Come on, let's be honest about what he actually said. What he actually said was a lot of times people go out and pick trash because they see trash in themselves. That's Absolutely. what black man was responding to. And my thing that I wanted to push back on that a little bit was Bolo in real life, most people ain't that deep, man. They really you not they hold on, hold on, Bolo. Hold on, bro. <laughs> they they really not that deep, bro. Like the majority of people I come across don't even think there's anything wrong with them. Like, did you notice how when I said I was broken, right? You came in, you wanted to respond to that. People look at that like, oh man, he broke. He did them same people curse like sailors, smoke cigarettes, get drunk, dress like whores, cheat on their wives, excuse me, cheat on their wives, cheat on their husbands, gamble. You know what I'm saying? Those same people do all type of toxic stuff and be broken in their own way and have their own triggers. But because I can say it out loud, right, that makes me a target. I got the shoulders to deal with it, though. I'm not really upset about it, right? But I'm just saying, most people don't even know what's wrong with them to even be deep enough that's to pick something because based on the fact that they, they see it in themselves. Although I will agree with you, vibrationally, people do attract what they are. But, but, that, no, but the, but the first thing that I said, the first thing that I said to you was was according to what you said. When we talk about trauma bonding, when you have low self esteem and don't know, that still doesn't change the fact. If I get into your car and you're about to rob that bank, we both get in charge, whether I knew or not. Absolutely, it doesn't change that fact. Mm-mm. So regardless of whether I knew that I was broken, I still picked that trash. Yep. So at the end of the day, I have to look at myself. We talk about the AAA. The AAA is acknowledgement, acceptance, and application. Acknowledgement is I am the reason why I'm in this situation. I'm the one that decided to get into that car. When Lil Podcast came to me and said, let's go ride on them, them busters, I'm the one that said, you know what, let's go. I have to acknowledge that. Then we move to acceptance. We have to accept the ramifications of the decisions that we make. And in between acknowledgement and acceptance is the growing curve. Because once you can say, it's my fault, now the growth starts. Now you can sit in and say, you know what? When he came to me, I should have found out. I should have turned left instead of making that right. And now you take what you learned and you apply it. And now you become that better man that you weren't. When you walk into that situation. So I agree with you. A lot of black men and Hispanic men are operating out of trauma and don't even know it. That still doesn't change the fact that they went dumpster diving. Hold your thought because I heard Janae's little voice trying to come out and we want the women to be able to speak to us. So Janae, was that you? No, it wasn't. It wasn't oh, but- I heard somebody say something, but do you have something you want to add right now? This is a good moment. I heard somebody though. I thought um, I heard a voice. No, not at the second. You guys oh. can continue if you have like burning thoughts. 
Okay, I'm sorry about that. I thought I heard a woman's voice. Was it you, Micah? Mika? It was me. Oh, see, it was you. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. So I wanted to push back on um, Black Man on the analogy. Um, because if you buy a new car and there's an issue with the new car, generally you have a warranty. And so the only way that you would be stuck with that vehicle is if you weren't responsible enough to deal with the issue when it first appeared, you would mm. still be covered. Most cars have a five, what, five year, 50,000, 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. And so if you take that back to the dealership and you say, I bought this car new, I made sure my credit was intact. I made sure my down payment was intact. I made sure that I had everything that I needed. And now there's an issue with my vehicle. They're required to, you know, do the repair on that. The only way you end up being stuck with that problem is if you're not proactive, if you're not consistent, and if you don't report the issues within the time of your warranty, you can even go take that car completely back and say, I have buyer's remorse within three days. Well, so you could annul, <laughs> annul your car, your car thing. So in a relationship standard, I, I believe that you can find those issues with people. There are women. I think there are people, but I'll say specifically, there are women that can be very manipulative. They can hide issues and things. They know how to, um, to, 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 to maneuver in and out of situations without you being able to detect certain behaviors. That's very possible. But because we know this, there's a way that I believe you should put pressure on people when you're dating, not get out and have fun and go on dates. I want to see you in a disagreement. I want to know how you interact with your boss when you're treated unfairly. I want to see how you treat people who have no benefit to you, people who can do nothing for you. I want to see you in your worst of situations more than I want to go on an expensive date because that tells me your character. And so in that manner, I think that sometimes, um, I don't know if I would say that it's trash in you, but sometimes we can be so desperate for what we want and we see it on the horizon and then we might skip that last little step. You know, like you're reading and you think you know how it's gonna end. So you skip the last couple of sentences and then at the bottom it says, don't do anything until you've read all of the directions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can find ourselves in situations like that in relationships. And that's, I think that, that, I think that it's hard to say that because I've been in that position like, well, no, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't me. But it's very difficult to say I'm in this situation and I may not be to blame for the situation, but I am a part of it. I played, that's accountability. Accountability isn't saying I'm right or I'm wrong or you're wrong. Accountability is saying, what was my role? Even if I was just an innocent bystander, I played a role and that's what helps you. Even if it doesn't fix that current situation, it prepares you to be in a better situation the next time it comes around. Now see, now you, know, you know I gotta make you laugh. Now, <laughs> you, me too. You do want to make too. <laughs> what? Black man, don't you be equating us to a car ever again. Ever. Again. <laughs> we are not going to be cars anymore. I'll get a car, but just let me be like a a, a Lamborghini, Lamborghini or something. Let me know. 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 Let me if anybody buys a Ford, she is going to talk about you and your car. She called it fix or repair daily or found on the road, the road bed, right? <laughs> because in the mid-2000s, hey, see, in the mid-2000s, she went to the lot, great credit and all. My mama always had A1 credit, oh right? Oh, my God. Bought a brand new, fresh off the lot, four miles on it, Ford Explorer. Three months in, the trans went out, and they would not do nothing with it, and they didn't want to take it back. And that thing was on her credit for and, a long and, and time. And you know what? And that's what I was going to say. I hated them people. Sometimes you would get that car, and even if you got a three-year, because Ford is three-year, 36, five-year, 60, right? Mm. So so, mm -hmm. so if you go back and you have an electrical issue that causes that transmission to go out, the only way you could take it back and have buyer's remorse, it has to be the way you took it off the lot. So if you can't bring it back on the back of a tow truck, now watch this. If it wow. comes back like that, they're not going to fix it. They're not going to fix it. 
They're not going to Wow. Come on. Come so anyway, on. Moving right on, along. We can get a whole commercial for forward. They all some shit. Y'all need to get the Hyundai 10 year, 100,000 mile bumper to bumper then because that ain't going to work. <laughs> hey, come on, boy. Boy. That, 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 oh, that, I didn't know that. So that was. Let me help you be a Hellcat. So when you see a woman, you gotta instead of asking her what she brings to the table, you gotta ask her, "Are you a four? Because then yeah, we can't do right. business. <laughs> now, now, security boss, I'm gonna say this, and we get back on topic. Security boss, I watched. I'm gonna send it to you. I watched a video the other day. They had the base model Tesla racing the Hellcat, and that Tesla ate it up. Show did because them electric cars are like, yes. But guess what? Ooh. I'm still a Hellcat. I am not a Tesla. I'm not electric. Let yeah. me add this. Right. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we gotta understand that, you know, the father guides our steps, and maybe, you know, the beautiful thing about little podcast, saying that he's broken because I say that too, little podcast. I suffered with uh, depression, and and seek therapy, right? Which is a good thing. Talk therapy is one of the best uh, helps that you can get from you know trauma and things of that nature, but. What's so important is it's the marks on your body because this, let me, let me give you this, because what a lot of people don't understand and what we get caught up on is our past is not who we are, but how far we have come and a marker of how far we still have to go. So if you ended up in a situation where you had to get a divorce and you got ran through, that's a learning curve, right? Because now the Lord may need you to be a testimony to go to those men. Because when we read the story of Joseph, this is a boy that did nothing wrong, that gave a dream to his father, and he, he was sold into slavery by his brothers. Mm. Not only did that happen, a woman accused him of sleeping with him. When he didn't, he was in jail. Long story short, without giving you the whole thing, 70 years later, after he became second in command to Pharaoh, he understood and said, this is why the Lord put me here so that my brothers came into Egypt. I was already set up for you to have a place to rest your head. So it's never about where we're going. Remember, life is meant to be lived forward, but understood backward. And mm -hmm. seldomly do we have the understanding of something when we're going through it. It's not until we're, we've gone through it. And maybe the Lord want a little podcast mm -hmm. to come on these YouTube streets to reach these young men and young women and say, there's nothing wrong with being broken. The problem is if you do nothing about it. And I'm willing to stand up here with these shoulders, these broad shoulders, wearing my Fonzarelli t-shirt, you know, my tank top, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and take the brunt force of it. And that's the beauty in it. That's the beauty of everybody on this panel. Everyone has trauma. Everyone do. Every brick is important. No matter how big it is, no matter how small it is, every brick as a place. So when I say to you, trash, the reason why I use that word, love, see, was because when you look at around the YouTube streets, that's how men, not all, so let me make, I say that to black men, not all, but they're comparing women to trash. So now you have to understand something. If you are attracting trash, I got to turn around and look at you. If a woman is always attracting a man that's abusive, the, it ain't the men, it's you. If nine people tell you that your breath stink, chances are your breath stink. Self-introspection is very important. And that's the only thing I say. And you said something that was so important. What dysfunction did I bring to the situation? Because this is the problem between the men while we have this gender war. Because men are blaming women, women are blaming men, and that trust and that love, that community, that village is not there anymore. So if I'm saying to you, I need you to submit, L truth given without love is a weapon. There has to be a foundation first. For me to tell little podcast B, yo, man, you be bugging. If I don't know the bro, he going to look at me like, who the hell you think you're talking to? Now, if there's a relationship there and something already established, he's already know that Bolo comes from love. So I don't have to have my garrison up. I don't have to have a bravado. I don't have to move that way. I can talk to my brother. You dig so what I'm saying? So, hey, can so, I ask the ladies on, a question me, when you get them. through BMU? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick, Bolo. You know, you know, you know. I like to walk down yes, the, the sidewalk with you and have a conversation. Listen, now, Bolo. <laughs> I, 
I, I, I want to I want to stop by waste management for a couple of minutes. What where all the trash is? <laughs> right. And as I stopped that bolo, you're killing yourself. So listen, when I stop at waste management, I, I'm reminded of. Let me, let me go into this. I'm reminded of when I was a kid, and I used to feel sorry for this puppet. And the name of the puppet, he was on Sesame Street. He was Oscar the Grouch. And my Oscar, man. And Oscar was sitting down in that trash can. And every time somebody got close to that trash can, Oscar would pop up and he would be so mean and so misunderstood. And everybody in the house, when I was at child care and I was at daycare and I was growing up in school and we used to watch it, everybody used to say that ugly thing in that trash can. But I used to feel bad for Oscar and I didn't even know why. But as I became an adult, I understand why. Because Oscar was subject to his surroundings and he couldn't see anything else but that trash can and all ernie had to do was come and turn that trash can over and tell oscar come take a walk with me let me show you something different but instead everybody kept him there everybody called him trash and when people call you something long enough you stay surrounded you stay comfortable where you are and nobody's there to come and get you oscar <laughs> needed a nathan to his oscar needed a nathan to his david and he didn't I, have it listen here's the thing now how did, how did I, well, since you use an example, I'm gonna change it a little bit. These, these air, you know, air quotes, these women that, you know, that are called these names, how do they have eight babies, brother? Because, because they're allowing. Because they're allowing what? They're allowing, that, they're, that, they're, that, they're, that, they're, that, they're, they're, uh-huh, they're in the trash can with Oscar. They're in there with Oscar. They need, the they need to see better too. Hold on. The man that slept with her, did he not know what she was? Uh, it depends. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Why is it that she's trash, but on him it's we depends? No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me rephrase it. I'm talking about. It, okay, I, right. I thought you were saying something else, so I may have heard you wrong. No, what I'm saying, okay. I said, well, I said, I said, I said at the beginning of the show that men need to okay. be held accountable as well because they're out here. Absolutely. They need to have some discipline as well because they they go out here and use these women as extracurricular activities. And they don't Absolutely. deal with the consequences. Uh, they have to deal with the consequences of their actions. You don't want to deal with the consequences? Right. You know why that man didn't want to take care of that baby? Because he realized that that woman wasn't... the that He realizes that that's not the woman he wanted to have for his child. Post net clarity. for his child. Post net clarity. So now, once you give... Right, right hell, hell yeah. You know, I'm sure all of us seen something about Susan. Something yeah. about Mary. Come Remember on. what he said? You've been walking... Which your, your trigger's been loaded all day. You need to get rid of it now so that when you go in there, you're thinking straight. The point of the matter is the reason Hello. why that's happened because, because these men are not having mentors like the men here. Hank, you. Yeah, I know the hair. None of them are having that mentor to sit down and go, bro, slow down. These women ain't going nowhere. There's eight women to a man on this planet, not including men incarcerated, and it raises the ratio. You ain't got to rush. They're not going nowhere. Get to know who you are first so that when you walk into that candy store, you don't get caught up with all the candy that you know you don't want. You walk in there and you grab the candy you need. That's the point. Grabbing the woman you need, not the woman you want, because the woman that you want Nine times out of ten is going to get you caught up. The woman that you need, nine times out of ten, is going to pray for you. Dearly beloved. So so can I ask y'all my question, SB? Because I think this is kind of important because C brought up trust earlier, right? Women well, let me, and let me, being let able me to trust one thing. Hold on to that question. Don't forget. Hink, you have been very quiet. Hello. Welcome. Would you like to add something right now? Or will we go ahead and go to a little podcast and let him complete his thought? No, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let my man go and speak it out. Hear what he got to say. All right, little pocket. Leave at the rest, Mister. Leave him at the restaurant. And this was so. And this is what's so crazy, right? I want to ask the women a question, but I am yearning to hear the men's response to this, right? Because she brought up trust earlier, and I definitely know how important that is in a relationship, right? But I don't think all the time that that men, especially young men, understand trust as it relates to a woman. So the question that I came up with is this. Is a woman's propensity to trust directly connected to her belief that she can depend on a man for provision? Man, say that again, man. It sounded so sweet. 
<laughs> Hold on. Well, let me a, say this. I oh, you're gonna go say it again for real. Go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, it is a woman's propensity to trust directly connected to her belief that she can depend on a man for provision. Mm. Okay, so listen, let me um let me put some clarity to that because I, I think a lot of people are gonna think when a woman says that she doesn't trust you, it's gonna go directly to and most of the time it does, whether you well, whether a man cheats or not. But a mature woman, it would be she don't trust you because she doesn't feel the respect and security that she needs from the provision, from the protection or the covering that she expects from you. That's where the lack of trust actually comes from. But a woman mostly would tell you it's because she thinks that you're cheating on her, but it's actually deeper than that. So I don't know if I answered the question or not, but I think I think you did. I just I hate that it's true. I kind of figured that was going to be the answer, but I just I just hate that it's true. I really do. Especially bro. Of, yeah, go ahead. Little pocket. We got we got to understand something, brother. Obedience is something that God demands. There's there's no question on that. Submission is a choice that a woman gives. Mm -hmm. This is what cats don't understand. Submission is a choice. What is she submitting to? You're asking her to give her life to you, my G. Hell yeah, she got to trust you. You're asking her to give you your life. You're asking her to, to follow you and let your plan guide her life. What is she submitting to? This is why it says women, wives, not girlfriends, wives, submit to your husbands like you would submit to the Lord. Why? Because that's who he is supposed to represent. Now, if he represents that, if he's that light, she going to submit. There's no question that you need to ask because if you find a woman that is in her purpose in God, she already knows what she needs to do. That's why you don't need to tell her. Watch this. Watch this in real time. Security boss. Yes, sir. Do your husband have to tell you to submit? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> your husband, right? I'm sorry? You submit to your husband, right? I do. Because he is your representative between Christ and you, correct? Correct. Bolo. Rolo, you just did the same thing I did. You using the exception. That's a fact. No. <laughs> That's a fact. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. A security boss, twenty six percent marriage rate says that that is a fact. I'm gonna show That's you where you're wrong. Says. Let me show you where you're wrong. Let me show you where you're wrong. Because God tells you, God, not Bolo. God tells you, if you seek ye the kingdom first, all else shall be added to you. Mm -hmm. So if you seek the kingdom first, guess what? He going to give you that woman you need. You see that woman up in the upper left? You'll get one like that. But, but guess you, what? We got, we got two others right here. The two that are married and the fourth one down here wanting to be married. So everybody on this panel knows and will do. Touche, touche. Touche, touche. Comes from you first. Yeah. <laughs> you first. Because when you're asking her to submit, she's going to take it. Hold on. Especially a woman of God. She's going to say, listen, I know what my position is. Now, let me just say this because I think women, men think that I think that men and women are equal. Men and women are equal when it comes to creation in the eyes of God. Men and women are not equal when it comes to purpose. They're not equal at all. Right? God loves the eagle as much as he loves the mouse. He loves them both. But he created the eagle to eat the mouse. So they're not created equally in purpose. So when she understands what her purpose is, she understands that I am the multiplier. I am the pillar of rest, not the pillar of stress. I am his prayer cloth when he is prayer cover when he can't pray. But I have to meet someone that matches my fly. That's the point. We're not doing that. We're not being patient enough. And this goes for both, not just men. We're not being patient enough to wait for the answer for the prayer. As soon as we pray to God and say, Lord, I need a woman. We put it on a timer. Ten minutes. If I don't get an answer, I'm going to go find me a shorty out here. And then we blame him. We don't talk to him in the midst of us walking to the club. But as soon as we end up with that chick that takes us to court and takes our whole check, now we go to the Lord and blame him. And the Lord says, I had nothing to do with that, my G. You ain't follow me. Shots fired. <laughs> so we, listen. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Bola. Go ahead. We have, I, to stop. we have to stop, take our time, 
and you see, and, and this is so important, man. I'm so, bro, listen, and this is not cat. I'm so proud of you, bro. For a young man, yeah, how old are you, little podcast? He 50. I'm just kidding. Oh, let me not even let me not even do uh, uh, years because I'm um, I'll be there in five more years. So you better be careful. You better be right. Don't you diss no 50 year old over right. here. You can't do that. You can't see that either, security ball. We can't see that either. I'm right. just kidding, though. I'm just kidding. At I'm all. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though. But... You're a handsome man. You look like you got swag. It's it, it's not an easy feat to come out here and say I'm a broken man. And whatever smoke y'all want to bring, bring it. You don't understand what kind of light you are, my G. Word. You don't understand what you just did. Open so many doors for other young men that are going to watch this on the repeat or watch this now. It's like, if he can do it, I can do it. We need to have that same example as these women that are up here. Standing firm and standing strong. They need to see this. They need to see the black man and Bolo have a civil discourse. We can have a conversation and laugh about it and bug it at the end. Say, yo, brother, I love you. I love you, Bolo. And, and move on. But the one thing that we understand, we're not going to agree on everything. But the one thing I know is he's a no, God-fearing right. man. You dig what I'm saying? So we can figure out the rest on the yellow brick road. Once I got that, and I know that. If that's what he is and he ain't faking the fuck we can figure the rest out but bro i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for you camming up and saying what you just said because it is so important we're asking these young ladies to trust us we're asking these young ladies to submit to us and it's such a beautiful heartfelt thing to see a young man come up here and say i am broken and not seem weak Word. Yeah, well, I gotta. I'm. A, I, I first of all, thank you for those words, bro. You know, I respect you. You know, I love you. Um, but honestly, it, for for right now, I just want to say shout out to Security Boss and her husband for this platform because I gotta admit, Gosh. the reactions that I get over here from being transparent and vulnerable is different in other places. It so is. one of the reasons that it's easier for me to do it over here without shame is because of the platform itself how it's ran and who's running it so shout out to all of y'all including black man and the panel and hink i can't hate, wait to hear what you got to say because you always give me something that i feel like i want to give to my son so i can't wait to hear what you got to say can i just chime in <laughs> janae is in the building hey hey guys sorry i've been like struggle streaming in my car right now but this conversation is so good i actually came on here to say exactly what miss c said she took all the words out of my mouth i don't feel like i have to repeat it but i feel like we're having church today here so, that's a fact well welcome it's like thank you <laughs> in, in, in the church the church you. also has a gift shop so stop by and get your sp nation shirt <laughs> i will Come on. Look, 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 uh, listen, make sure you check out the videos <laughs> and share right. the videos. <laughs> you know how they sell them videos. <laughs> yeah. The DVDs, $19.99. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. It's great. Like, honestly, I totally am in agreement with what everyone's saying. Um, I just have a couple of things with um, Bolo TV we was talking about uh, submission and everything. And I just feel like it really is. I don't feel like, but. I know it's a really biblical concept at its core. And so I do see a lot of women who are willing to do that and they're willing to submit and be that, be that person. Cause it's, it's just more natural to do so than not, but there also ha there has to be, um, there has to be leadership and submission to Christ before we delve into that. And that's something that I personally learned in my last relationship is, yeah, I'm very, naturally that way but it can't you can't submit to just anybody because that's how you get jaded that's how you fall on your face and you know start hating people because you've given so much of yourself to people who don't even know what to do with it not that they don't deserve it but they just don't even know what to do with it because submission is like really from the most high that's what god calls us to do so it really should be done correctly not just <laughs> with anyone and then there was something else that um Bolo TV mentioned a couple seconds ago literally just said it oh saying like how well kind of what C was saying too like about you kind of attract what you are and you're you're attracting your mirrors so 
um, well, podcast, the fact that you're being so like um, vulnerable about you being broken. And it's like, it's honest and it's true because I'm sure so many of us relate. I mean, and we realize that too, when we're in relationships and seeing dating people and seeing who they are and seeing what we actually attracted. And then when it doesn't work out and you leave with so many feelings and emotions and like negative emotions about this person, then you have to like ask yourself, well, maybe because like I attracted that, you know, like I, that person came to me and I accepted them because we are like congruent in some way. And so that's an extremely humbling thing. I'm going through it now and I totally get it. And it's, it's a lot of like inner, inner work. It sounds cheesy to say, but it's a lot of inner work that needs to be done before you're like, okay, this relationship, this is what happened. This is how I felt. Now I have to decide like, what was my part in it? Why did I even get into that relationship? Why did I attract that person? Even if that person's like still super great and super awesome, but if the relationship didn't work out, there's always a reason for it. So um, I'm just, I agree with everyone here. This is a really great discussion and I'm glad that everyone's being so honest and vulnerable and uh, security bosses really uh, feels like a super safe space for it. And so I'm thankful that you created this for us to have like this sort of honest conversation too. That's the only way to go. That's the only way we're going to grow. That's the only way we're going to fix these issues. Some of them. It's the only way to be. On behalf of the security boss Baptist church, we would like to thank you guys for coming in today. We're not Baptist. We're not Baptist. Oh, I'm sorry. So the security boss, uh, hold my mute while I shout uh, Baptist Municipal Church of God in Christ and Latter-day Saints. So go ahead and stop by the gift shop and get you a five, SB Nation five-star sweatshirt. It's already been laid. Our hands already been laid on it. If you want to change the way you walk, go get you a sweatshirt. And then she got the, then she got where you can sip greatness. She go over and get you a coffee cup so you can sip greatness. And then come on over, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, then tell your mama and them to come on over to church on Mondays. She'll be here on Fridays, sometimes Saturday, and she'll be on everybody else's channels sometime <laughs> soon. So go ahead right now and go to that gift shop so you can support the church. Back to you, Pastor Security Boss. Oh my God. I am, I cannot yeah. even accept all that, but thank you, Black Man. So Hink, Hink, go ahead and bless us because you know what? You always give it us exactly what we need. But you know what? You the one to give it to us and we have to just like Swallow. Oh, I'm ready. Say we have to do like this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it to us. So go ahead and go ahead and add to it, sir. Well, my thing is uh trust. She I'm not gonna trust I don't trust anybody right off the bat. Nobody, I don't give a damn who it is. I'm gonna so, you gonna lie to me all in my face until you show me uh I can believe you yeah. and believe in you. So that that's off the bat. I'm not gonna come off bad trusting no woman. Now, unfortunately, a lot of these young cats, they do that because, well, they, they, I don't know if it's trust. They just blindsided by the, the, the features, the looks, the ass, and the titties. You know what I'm saying? So they blindsided by the looks right off the off the bat for these young cats. Yes. But for these older cats, man, you ought to know. If you just sit down and just trust them like that, you's a fool. Then you're going to continue to be a fool, then be a fool. You used to be a dumbass fool getting ran over. But now, uh, little podcast, I hear what you're saying. Talking about you broken. Now it's time to, for some action to follow behind the words. Because words don't mean shit unless they got action behind it. You could talk all goddamn day, say, I'm, I'm broken, I'm this, I'm that. That's, that. that's good. You did the first step. Now you need to follow through. Now you need to do what you need to do. Well, that means get on a Zoom meeting with a, with a therapist. Or lay on somebody to catch, like, have somebody to talk to. You got to do something. You got to put some. You got to put some action behind them words. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you don't, then you just talking, and talk is cheap from where I'm from. So, I definitely agree with you and respect that. And 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 a lot of people see what. Sometimes I don't think what people understand though. When like for me to be able to say I'm broken, what it is, it's like I look at it the same way as a person with asthma right you have asthma you can't do nothing about asthma until you have an asthma attack 
that's when you do something about it. It's a pump that comes you get and you, you have to squeeze it and take it, right? So it's like when you have anxiety, anxiety is all day, 24 hours a day. It never goes away. It never stops. Nothing you can do about that except for take the white man's drugs, which I refuse to do. So it's basically it's just you limiting yourself to hostile environments, right? And then you want to be with somebody that accepts and understands what you're dealing with, right? So same thing with asthma. I had a little brother who had asthma. We didn't smoke cigarettes around him, right? Because we don't want to contribute or have make him have an asthma attack. The brain is the same way. It's a muscle, just like everything else. So when you're dealing with trauma, TBI or PTSD, when you're dealing with depression, when you're dealing with anxieties, anxiety, all of that is, is in the brain. It's different from the mind. That's something else that people don't understand. The brain and the mind is two different things, right? Your brain is like the, the computer hard drive and your mind is the computer screen. It's the visual of what you're what you're perceiving in your brain. Right. And so I've had so many car accidents. I've been through a lot. But the one thing I wanted to say was this is my therapy. This is me sitting on the couch. A lot of people don't want to accept that, but it really is. Hank giving me counsel right now. SB giving me counsel right now. Bolo giving me counsel right now. Black man giving me counsel. C giving me counsel. I'm just not paying for it. For dog, you know what I'm saying? That's the only difference. But the, yeah, but we're not professionals. We're not. Professionals. I get what you mean. Is you can't what, what, probably tell me, you but, know, how to, you know, do breathing. You know, they have breathing techniques for you to do whenever you have an anxiety attack, right? You might don't have that information. But what I'm saying is, me being here, when I get off of these platforms, bro, I be so inspired, and I just keep working on my own platform, and then I'm able to rest at night, and and I'm not I'm not waking up to so many nightmares because I'm not going to sleep having replayed something 50 times over in my head before I lay down. So well, I, I well, understand what you're saying, but this is a form of therapy. But go it's ahead. I'm sorry. Temporary. You understand? That's just temporary. But you need to know the, 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 the certain skills and the methods of what you need to do to have a certain conversation with an individual. Professional, like I said, to know what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? I could tell you to you blue in the face, but man, I, I'm just, me, just like telling your, your grandma, you should tell you, I just, you know, just get, take the robot tussie. You good? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no I, believe me, bro. I've, listen, I've done, I, before I even got diagnosed with this stuff, I did all of the research on my own. I was telling everybody what was going on. Everybody was like, man, no, you can't self-diagnose. Went to the doctor. They verified every single thing that I said. So trust me. I mean, when I'm on here, this is the work. When I'm not on here, the only thing I'm not doing really that I should be doing, bro, is I'm not going to the gym. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I feel like I need a gym partner, man. Like I'm 263 right now. I got on the scale the other day because somebody said I was three something. I'm like, I know they lying. I ain't no three, nothing, right? So I was 255 the last time I checked. I'm 263 now. So I do need to get in the gym. I want to get down to like 205, 210. And so uh, you know, it's that part. But I agree with you, brother. Like, yeah, it, it it's some other stuff too that I probably could do more. I, I I can't get with the spirituality thing at this point. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing I'm afraid of really dealing with because with with anxiety, and then you start putting in mysticism and all this other stuff, it just it makes it uncomfortable. It's more peaceful to deal with it from a more secular mindset whereas you're just looking at it from accountability introspection and you're just doing the work on your own instead of relying on something that isn't really tangible for you i tried religion it didn't work out but i would like to be more spiritual right and then it's the eating habits that's another thing cutting out the pork the red meat it don't have to be forever but just for a while get yourself back help i mean like really 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 people that's really therapeutic in these fields will tell you what you eat what you take in spiritually and and visually the movies and tv shows and you watching the music you listen to and and exercising those are the three main keys really to to providing yourself with a healthy healthy lifestyle to be able to deal with right anxiety and depression it's, these are things that really never go away you know what i'm saying but you just find a way to overcome them so that but, they're not you know what i'm saying causing dysfunction in your life and and, and you, that's where i'm at right now let me ask you what was your hesitancy about going to see a therapist um it's not really a hesitancy about going to see a therapist it's i just honestly i can't afford it if i'm just being honest are, are you working yeah does your yeah. your your employee have an eap program I, I hate to admit this on the live, but I don't even know what that is. 
then you uh, it's an employee's assistant program and oh, okay. you talk to your hr and you need to find out most most employers do, do so yeah so what that. about when you what about if you when you first got the job what about if you first got the job and you you know they always ask you if you have anything and of course most of us we always just gonna put no because we don't want that you know what I'm saying to prohibit us from getting a job. If I go to them now and say, "Well, hey, yeah, I do have these," but no, they won't even know about it. Discriminate against you. Yeah, they, they, they can discriminate against. They won't even know about it. It's okay. against. But, but but if you go um if you go to and, and again, please don't take this as you know some type of advertisement. I have all the numbers that are free. Free therapists, free. If you go to my channel, look at the 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 the, the, the what's the little thing. That, my the YouTube description. channel? The YouTube channel, I have all the phone numbers. On your description? There. Yeah, description. And all of it's free. Okay. So if you look at the bottom, you look at this description, there's a number there that will fit you. Well, look at God. So listen, um, let me do this super chat. Um, we got two of them want to do, but uh, Freezy, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. And I hope you're doing well. We haven't seen you in a couple of weeks, but I, I know you've been showing up. Thank you. Uh, Freezy says, uh, Bolo said, women of God a woman of God. But why are so many men leaving the Christian church, but yet still full of so-called women of God? Hold on for a minute for the answer to that, that, that okay. question. Um, Lord him. Black man unfiltered. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read it in my preacher voice. I got you. I got you here. SB five star church where the motto here is where well, wisdom is displayed for free, but the gift shop money is for me. Go ahead and hit that song, Doc. Like? I'm gonna run it every time. Hey. Give me your mind. Going up, you know the crying. Money like I'm gonna run it every time. Hey. Give me your mind. Going up, you know the crying. Big Bad Bull's comments. Big Bad Bull is always such a uh, lyrical man. <laughs> he says, I'm a little Bulls. confused. Seems like when talking about relationships, a little podcast brings up the and, oh, the anxiety stating he's he's broken, but it seems like they are two separate things. Just a bit confusing. Everybody ain't gonna understand you, Doc. Well, the, the thing is, is honestly, bro, it's, it, I'm not gonna lie, it's affecting my relationships. I mean, when I look at how, and I hate to say this because it's, it's going to be toxic, but when I look at how most men act in a relationship and how most women act in a relationship, I act more like the woman. And I attract women who act more like the men, right? And it's based on things that I've been through in my past and also the anxiety. Like most men are just cool. You hear women talk, they cool. They don't ever want to talk about how they feeling. They be closed up and... You know, they don't want to discuss nothing, whereas I always want to talk about how I'm feeling. And I want to talk about the issue until we come to a resolution. I don't want to put it off for three, four, five days, right? So um, th that's the reason why I bring it up. Because honestly, to me, right, the thing that is affecting my relationships the most are those things. If I didn't have those issues, if I didn't have the traumatic brain injuries that I have suffered. Uh, I, in 1994, I was in a car accident. My car flipped over a median on the expressway into oncoming traffic and flipped over like seven times. And I, all the cars were just smacking me, smacking me, smacking me, smacking me, right? And when I got out of the car, you know, everybody was looking like, bro, how did you survive that, right? I didn't know how I survived. Of course, my mom being a super Christian minister, it was all Jesus in her eyes, right? And the only thing that was physically wrong with me was my lip was busted. But lo and behold, I developed migraines debilitating migraines where I couldn't see, couldn't talk, had to close myself off in dark rooms, and my memory has started to fade over time. So, and then that wasn't the only car accident. I've been in some other ones, but that was the worst one. So ever since then, I've had the head injury, the back injury, and it's changed me. I can't get on planes anymore. I used to fly. I can't get on roller coasters anymore. I used to do that, right? So the reason why I bring it up, Bad Bull, is because this is the thing that's actually affecting my relationship. I, I, I've matured in an understanding, right? But I haven't yet conquered the behavior. 
right? But I am in, I'm, mentally, I'm in the same space as security boss where I'm in a relationship where I'm fighting for my relationship. I don't want to lose my relationship. I don't want to have to go out here and start over again and get with somebody that has to learn my issues and all this and that. And I got to learn their issues and all of that. I'm cool. I know what's wrong with my lady. She knows what's wrong with me. And I'm just trying to figure it out. And I just want to be a better version of myself. And at the same time, trying to be a content creator. And so that's why I say this is ther- this is my therapy. When I come here and I'm sitting with people, even if I can hear sometimes in what they say, where they may be broken or where they may have suffered trauma, trauma and they don't see it themselves for me it's a benefit for me it's therapeutic for me because it lets me know i'm not alone and that i'm out here with people that actually care about me and are in contact with me and i mean it's just a beautiful thing man it really is i can't really thank you enough security boss honestly so so let me ask a question though and this is a good question to ask is she what you want or is she what you need Uh, for me, I could be wrong, but I would say she's what I need. And the reason why is because the things that I, the things that I wanted in a woman, she had those, but she was also the things I needed. It's one thing I learned from being with this woman is that even when she was doing things or things were bad in a relationship, it was lessons in that, that made me better. It was so ironic. I was scared to even tell her that, like, you remember that time when we went through this? It was it was a couple of lessons in that that have made me a better person, made me do more introspection, made me look inside more to where I realize now I probably even needed that thing to happen. I needed you to push me. I needed you to not be willing to, excuse me, settle for the behavior that I was displaying at that point. I heard uh, uh, Louis Farrakhan say, you you're not a real man if you don't have a woman. He said, because a woman is going to test you. She wants to know if you're going to back up the things that you're saying out of your mouth, right? And that was my thing. I couldn't deal with the testing. I couldn't deal with the pressure. One of the reasons why I even asked the question that I asked you about whether or not a woman's trust is tied in to her belief, right? I use words specifically. Her belief that she can depend on you for provision. Provision I use specifically because I didn't want to say finances, right? I wanted to make it elegant. So, but my thing is this, if I'm everything else, but you can't depend on me for money, you feel like you can't trust me, that's a little bit disheartening. We live in the real world, right? I, all things being equal and, and, you know, best case scenarios, yeah, I got all the money in the world and you ain't got to work. But we live in the real world. There are some really good men out here who don't have money or may make average money or like me. I make less than average money at this point because I'm only working part time because I'm trying to, excuse me, become a full time content creator. Right. So I'm doing a whole bunch of things to reorganize my life so that it can fit what the vision that I have for it. Right. So does that make me a bad person? Earlier, you asked the question, would you date you? Right. Yes, I would date me if I was me because I understand me. Right. <laughs> I would. Oh, you're, you're the woman. You're the right. woman. Yeah. I know, but I'm saying if, if you turn me into a woman right now and put me in front of me as a woman, yes, I would date me because I know exactly what I am and I understand me. But if it was my daughter, probably not. You know but what look, I'm saying? I, because I know my daughter ain't mentally strong enough to deal with deal with me. Yeah, but you hey. got to add something to that provision. Provision. Uh, pro- provision for a woman is also security and stability right right that's what i'm saying i don't think a lot of young people because i was one of them i don't think they necessarily understand that component we feel Mm -hmm. like oh you just want me for money it's what it feels like, right? So that's what I'm saying. It needs to be explained in a way from our women, such as yourself, such as a C, right? And then also from our men, such as a bolo, such as a hink, so that it can resonate with us from both hemispheres, from the feminine and the masculine. Oh, okay. The women see it this way, but the men understand it too. And that's how you bring the two together and we get an understanding. But you know what? You have to you have to have that as a plan though. Meaning, mm-hmm. if you only make fifty thousand dollars, y'all gotta be living somewhere where fifty thousand dollars pays the bills. That's a fact. We live in Kentucky. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm just saying you gotta be the person with that. In order for you to, in order for that to happen, you still have to be the leader in that. Yeah, yeah, and that I agree. Thousand dollars, you still gotta make it work. But Hink, before yeah, you make, before you say what you're getting ready to say, let's, um, Mr. Life. Thank you so much for your five dollars super chat. He's saying showing support. I look forward to joining your panel again. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much. But Hink, go ahead and um, add what you were getting ready to add. I hope I didn't cut you off and you forgot. No, no, you good. 
I, I, man, I was gonna say, man, if you if you have insurance, you, you really need to take advantage. I don't know if uh, your 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 lady friend or your girlfriend, I don't know what the title is. Uh, what does she say about you uh, getting therapy? Does she even say anything to you about that, or maybe even suggest that, or or yeah. throw it out there to you? Yeah, she does. She did. She wants me to do therapy. She wants to do therapy herself, and 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 we talked about doing couples therapy. But uh, like at this point, we're both kind of like make, trying to make sure that we're doing the right thing. She started watching Security Boss. So, you know what I mean? Uh, hopefully, you know, that'll benefit her. I mean, th- th- well, honestly, I think she like definitely want me to get I know she want me to get therapy. <laughs> Tell her to come and cam up one day. We can have some conversation. You know, we ain't got to be all personal, though. You know, we can just talk. No, actually, I was going to email you because I got an idea for a show about couples counseling. And I really think, you know, you and then whatever man you think would be suitable. I think that would be a great show for people to really be able to come on. Because honestly, one of the issues that we have is that we don't ha- she doesn't have the female like a security boss in her life. Right. And I don't have the man in my life. Well, I, I can't say that because I do. I have a bolo in my life. I have a black man in my life. I have a Sir Hell in my life. I have a Hink in my life. But she don't have a security boss in her life. She don't have a C in her life. You see what I'm saying? So it's like the only way we will get these type of outcomes that we're looking for and in as far as the therapy goes is if we reach out to other people and so i I really want to be able to do a show where somebody can come and they ain't got to feel like they really talking to a complete stranger you know what i'm saying they can come and talk to somebody that everybody knows and trusts and comes well recommended which is a security boss and they can just talk you know they don't have to be fully transparent but just talk about some of the things that they deal with and get real advice i think that would be a great show honestly well, let me say this. Um, I only talk from example because I'm not a counselor. Right. I can only give examples for what have gone on in my life. But you know what? I'm very strict. I'm very strict about my life. Yeah. I actually turn people off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, I you know I can't help it because I that's that's just what works for me though. You know, um, that's just what works for me. I'm very I'm I'm very strict about how I move, especially in marriage. So yeah. you gotta know first thing, first thing, I'm saying you need to be married. I mean, why why waste all this good information and you're not trying to make the first step? I'm just being honest with you. Cause I believe that's the key. So if I'm the person that believes that's the key, it's really not much to talk about until you're willing to, I'm giving you all these examples of what, what works for me. I'm just gonna say what works for me. And if it sounds good to you and you like, huh, you know, maybe that'll work for me then that would be some steps that you have to take. It's no, it makes no sense for people to keep pouring into the situation. It's almost like what Hink just said a little bit ago. Mm-hmm. You're, you've already said, you made the, not announcement, but you've accepted and you're accounting for where you're broken, what needs to be fixed. So now what happens next? Yeah. You know. So yeah, and then okay. also Hink, to your, to what you was, to the question that you asked me and tied into what, what uh, security boss asked me, is she the person I need? It's like, like I said, the stuff that I've been through with her, and I'm not just talking about bad, I'm talking about good. I'm talking about the times when she motivated me in ways that she didn't even know she was motivating me. The things that I have accomplished with her that I thought I could never do. She inspired me. It's like it's biblical in a way. It's just that we both come from brokenness. Right. And it's like the brokenness is has been getting in the way. But now we're both at an at a at a we're at a place where we're trying to figure it out. I'm not focused on her. She not focused on me. I'm, but I'll be honest. I'm a little bit more focused on her than she is on. I'm you more focused something. on myself now, but I'm 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 still you know focused on her might, a little bit. Every every yeah. black person is broken, so I think we every black person needs to get there. Exactly. Right? That's that's Absolutely. a must. Exactly. That is a must. But if, if, if I you appreciate want, you saying that, Hank. For if, if you want to if you want to be the leader like you need to be. Mm-hmm. You need to take the first step. You need to be going to sign up now. You said you live in Kentucky, correct? Yeah, right now I'm in Chicago, but we live in Kentucky. Yeah. Okay, so you can get passport. That's the that's the affordable uh, health insurance here in Kentucky. And if that's the case, you get at least eight free visits. Yeah. Before you have to start paying. Yep. Eight free that's visits. Exactly. So that's going to let you know if this is the right therapist for me. And if right. it's not, move on to the next. But don't move on just because you don't like what they they got to say. Right. So they're gonna they gonna when you get in third, they're gonna take some shit you don't want to hear. Right. You got to accept it and move on as man. You got to accept it and process. You know yeah. what I'm saying? 
chew the meat, spit out the bone, man. You know what they say, but you got to take advantage of it. You know, that's you right. have to, because that's a must. What you're dealing with, YouTube can't help you. You YouTube is not going to fix what you're dealing with. I promise you, it's not. Some yep. some of the things you're dealing with, it might hurt you, because yep. they're going to they're going to they say, "Oh, you good? You good?" No, hell no. Don't make you less of a man just because you go to therapy. Don't make you less of a man because you go get your checkups. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna get a colonoscopy. Whether you think so or not, they're gonna have to put a finger to your ass. I promise, it's coming. You have to. You're gonna have to get your prostate checked. You have to get those things. So don't make, don't feel like a less man. You all gonna get it, or you're gonna have to deal with colon cancer one day. And and guess what? It could be something that could be uh, dealt with, uh, cured, and mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about. It. But if you you gonna let your pride get away, don't go with your visits. Then you'll see what happens later. But I'm yeah. not going through that far in the detail. But it, get your checkups. I tell I tell them all the time, black men, yeah. protect yourself at all times. I'm not just talking about just women. I'm talking about everything. Everything. And, and you know what, little podcast? That doesn't keep you from coming on to YouTube and, and sharing either. Right. You know, you can do both. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't. No, no. You, know, you can do both. So don't don't let I'm I mean, I'm with them. I'm no counselor. I just I just speak from examples and what's worked for me. Um, so I definitely agree with what Hink and Black Men, and I'm sure everybody on this panel is probably saying the same thing because I think we have a therapist here actually. Up in the top right hand corner, um, Mika, ain't that what you do? I know. I'm not a, th- a therapist, but I've been through a lot of therapy. I'm a PTSD survivor, and I've accumulated a lot of tools from a lot of therapists and a lot of things that I've used from my 20s throughout that I use daily now, even in my 40s, um, to help me heal and to help my clients. And I also recommend it for people to use those tools while they're working with a therapist. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm agreeing yeah, I with you. SB, I want to thank you for having me. Uh, oh, look, absolutely. Man. Yo, look, yes. My God. Uh, Hank, you brother. Micah, um, little podcast. I, uh, I sent you a text in the back chat. Yeah, I got it. You got it? Yeah, I got Bolo. it. Thank you, man. Hey, Bolo. Yep. Bro, yeah, bro. You and I are going to do a yes, show sir. together. Me and you, me and me and you, going to do a show together. And the name of it is going to be "Getting Oscar Out of the Trash Can." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I would love to do a show with you, man. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Before I, I, I bounce out, <laughs> man, brothers, we got to get help. There's yeah. nothing wrong with going for therapy. You have a broken leg, you go to the doctor, you get a cast. Yes. So if your mind is right. If you're having, you know, mental depression, illness, PTSD, addiction, there's nothing wrong getting help, right? You are a fool if you don't get it because you're operating half as yourself. So please, man, what Hink said, what SB said, what Black Man said, get the help, man. It's out there. I promise you it's out there. It's free. Get the help. All right, with that, man, guys, God bless you. SB, thank you for having me on, man. Black Ooh. man, thank you so much. You guys have a blessed night. You too, brother. All right, Bolo. And security boss, I disagree with you when you say you're not a counselor. Uh, you can say you're not a therapist, right, because a therapist is a person that is trained. But as a counselor, somebody who's over 25, I'm sure, somebody that's been married as long as you, somebody with the spiritual wisdom that you have, that's exactly what you are at this point. I would call myself a coach, but I understand what you're saying. I definitely a coach. Oh, no, I gotta get you a coach. jersey. Hey, <laughs> coach, <laughs> baby, you a SB jersey. Listen, you don't know where to go yet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> all right. all right. all right. all right. you always got an infomercial, y'all. Hey, don't do that. Don't act like you don't know about it now. You know, I right. have an infomercial. That's fact. <laughs> yeah. Watch, talk, and act. How are you, sir? How are you everybody doing? Doing well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming up. I noticed that you wanted to share some things. I think you wanted to talk a little bit with a little podcast. So um, we're going to let you do that. But I'm glad to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Um, to the brother, I seen your little podcast. When it comes to anxiety, a lot of it is triggered by fear. 
And our CNS system, a lot of people don't teach us about our CNS system. And it's very sensitive and vital that we have that. A lot of times what triggers anxiety, like I said, is fear. Um, in order to so-called maintain having less anxiety, it's better that we change up our lifestyle. Uh, one of the first things we can definitely do is change up our dieting. I know a lot of people aren't familiar with that, but dieting is a huge part of why we have anxiety. You know, one of the videos that I talk about is uh, parasites. Parasites actually control the way we feel and what we can consume. Um, they control whether we like sweets, whether we like salty foods, uh, whether we like... Um, foods like pork, things like that. Why? Because they have to live inside the body. The whole point is removing those parasites out of the body so that they don't maintain life. Um, anxiety, it, it can ruin your life. I'm glad that you have somebody with you to help you get through those things mentally. So it's very important. Um, one of the things I would say is what are you, what are you consuming on a daily basis? Like, what's your diet? It's the worst, bro. I, I had I put together uh, a, a menu for myself, and then I just got out of it. You know, sometimes it's it's like what you said, bro. When life hits you, sometimes um, it's a fear based thing. So you think the worst things are ever going to happen. I'll give you an example. I've been fully transparent so far, right? I had a dream last night or this morning, uh, this afternoon before I woke up that my lady was cheating on me. I jumped up. It's, it takes 10 minutes or better to get out of the emotional state of the dream because I'm so connected to it. And I immediately called my girl and I was like, why did you touch him? <laughs> she was like, wait, what? <laughs> I said, why did you touch him? She's like, what are you talking about? It's like, what was it? Was it a deja vu or was it a dream? I said, it was a dream. She was like, okay, I'm sorry about that, but I don't even want to hear it, right? So, of course, I was able to let it go. Back in the day, I would have drove it home for hours on hours questioning because I just had this dream. So it got to be reality. Right. Yeah. So it's a little bit different now. You know what I'm saying? But just to go back to your question, bro, it's terrible, bro. I barely eat. And when I do eat, I ain't eating what I'm supposed to eat. Uh, I'm on a daily when I'm going to work. I'm just stopping at the gas station and grabbing chicken fingers or Italian beef or something. You know what I'm saying? And I definitely know I eat too meat. It's like I know what I'm supposed to do, bro, but it's it's just so hard to do it. TJ Randolph talked about it uh, once upon a time on the panel, man, dealing with this depression, bro. It's like it, it make you not want to do nothing, right? So you know you got to eat because if you don't eat, you know, you're just going to feel a certain way. And then you just go grab the quickest thing because you don't even really want to be out of the room. You know what I'm saying? When I go to work, I'm trying to get to work as fast as I can. When I leave work, I'm trying to get home as fast as I can because I don't really want to be outside because I'm afraid I'm going to get put over by the police. Ironically, I have driver's license, brand new car, and, and full coverage insurance, but I still move like I don't. You see what I'm saying? Because of the fear, I'm always worried that something's going to happen, the worst case scenario. So, you know, but I'm so glad that you came up and said that, bro. Thank you so much. Because I know sometimes people think that I just be talking, but you, like I haven't really done the research. But you really just said the same thing I said earlier. This is the eating, exercise, and watching what you take in. Don't sit up and watch Law and Order SVU all day. You know what I'm saying? Watch unsolicited security boss. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I um, mean, those are the three things that you can really do to 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 challenge. Dealing with anxiety and depression and trauma. Also, the, for instance, you see my cell phone right here, right? The exposure mm -hmm. to radiation also exacerbates the type of anxieties that we have. Like, for instance, if you have social anxiety, you want to make sure that your eyes aren't so glued to a television set, uh, computer screens, mm -hmm. phone screens, things like that. The exposure wow. radiation also sparks that as well. It, 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 um, interferes that I did your, know. Yeah, it interferes with your hypothalamus, your thymus uh what else your thyroid so that's why it's important for people to consume things like seaweed because it has mm -hmm. iodine in it very important so that you can um maintain a healthy thyroid specifically right. because a lot of people you ever see people with bulging eyes like uh gray yeah. these things like that that's because they have a hyperactive thyroid but 
some of those people actually end up having anxiety and they feel very uncomfortable in social settings. Mm. So you have to be able to understand what these things can do to you mentally. Right. Uh, in your situation, it sounds more post-traumatic stress. Like, yeah. like almost like something happened, serious event happened to you. Oh man, if you can think about it, it happened to me. And most of it happened before I was 17. So, you know what I'm saying? That's why I say I'm, I've been dealing with this for a long time. But this is part of the reason why I can't really deal with religion, right? Because mm-hmm. growing up in a religious family, it's apostles, bishops, ministers, evangelists, church of God in Christ, right? Mm-hmm. It was always, it's just the devil, right? There was no secular understanding to what could possibly be going on to you. Nope. Your father was a dope fiend, tragic person. So that's why you're being so traumatic because that's who your father was. Nope. That ain't nothing but the devil. And it's like, nah, this ain't the devil. Like something is really going on. I'm trying to get y'all to realize this. Y'all just want to put anointing oil on my forehead. That ain't working. You see what I'm saying? So I got all the way into my thirties, into my adulthood before anything was ever diagnosed. Have you ever and tried meditating? Yes, but the, and the fear is the reason why I can't do that. I have, try, a problem. I have a problem with closing my eyes. Okay, we'll try um try listen to some music. For instance, four yes, music is hurt. Yes, you know, something like that to relax your nerves, calm. Uh, maybe I sleep with that with Epsom salt. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. Yep, Epsom yeah. salt. I, I use Epsom salt, and I also uh, what's this thing called? It's this uh, aroma thing that I use with the Epsom salt when I take my baths. A lot of times, when me and my lady get together on the weekends, we always get jacuzzi tub and hot tub. Room oh, whoa, so that's too much now. Hold on, Paul. I'm just saying, man, because oh. the, 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 the the bath, man, he's not lying. The baths are way better than showers. Showers are so uncomfortable for me. Baths are so much better. But you are right. The 432 hertz music, I use that. Um, and I use uh, fan noise when I sleep at night. And then I started looking into the feng shui thing, right? Mm-hmm. Sleeping in certain directions, sleeping with your head north or south could be very bad for some people, depending on what your your uh, feng shui number is, right? You don't necessarily have to believe in that, but it has worked for me, I can be honest. When I sleep certain ways, my sleep is more peaceful and I can lucid dream, right? So if something is going wrong, typically every night I dream about being murdered. So when I started sleeping to, with my head to the wet to the west, I was able to avoid it. Mm-hmm. I was able to control it. I was lucid dreaming. I was able to say, okay, I know I'm dreaming. No, y'all not going to kill me tonight. But sometimes you just come in, you just jump in the bed. Sometimes you're not even thinking about your feng shui or your Epsom salt or none of that stuff. You just beat down and you just do what you want to do. And then you're waking up and in the middle of the night screaming, you know, because people was pulling you apart, you know, from you. So it's, it's real bad, bro. Like, but the, the great thing about it is understanding that now at a, and a, as an adult, that this ain't you. See, that's the thing. When people who are going through trauma, the reason why they really don't be willing to deal with it is because they think it's them. And most people don't want to think it's something wrong with them. It's not you. It's your brain. Right. That's what's going on with you. It's so like you just have to be willing to deal with that. So hold on. for me. Let me just make this one statement. I want everybody to understand and know that a little podcast, this is therapeutic for him to actually speak about this. That's a fact. And, and to tell and share with what he actually goes through. Um, what is it? Watch a talk and act. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I didn't hear exactly what you do, but I'm saying that there's nobody that I know of that is a therapist here. Mm-hmm. We're just allowing him to speak and just to get this off of him, off his chest. We're not offering anything. I don't think we are. Are you a therapist, sir? I'm not, I'm not, okay. I'm not saying I'm anything. I'm not no, saying no, no. I'm okay, so you're fine. Therapist. I'm speaking yeah. for you two then. I'm just saying uh, we're allowing him to speak. And, and just to get this off of him. And if it's if it's ringing a bell or chiming with someone else, that's just what we're doing. We're not trying to give him any kind of, we're not trying to fix him because we can't. We've yeah, already- have, We don't try to give any medical advice. Understand. Yeah, we're not giving any yeah. medical advice, that's but it. to go to the therapist, that's all we, that's all we <laughs> Right, yeah. No well, I know another, another thing you might want to do, man, is mm-hmm. cut the TV off, cut the phone off, and maybe read a book before you go to sleep. I mean, be at, at peace. Don't eat so late. That's another situation. That's big, yes. You can't, you can't do. I don't care how hungry you are, then go to bed hungry. Right. Don't, don't, I, I wouldn't, Matt, matter of fact, I would go this far. I wouldn't eat at the 8 p.m. Yep. And, 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 and at 8 p.m. hour, I will pick up a book or, like you said, you don't, you can't meditate because you can't close your eyes. That's cool. Yeah. 
read a book or listen to some music, listen to some soft noise, you know, uh, 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 before you go to bed or while reading a book. I would do that and, and, and keep it and, and be at peace. You know what I'm saying? Don't can be up all late on Fight Club, though. Come on now. You, 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 <laughs> you can't be doing that. That's not going to help you. Uh, watch the movies you watch, the television shows you watch. If you're watching violent yeah. shows, don't do that. I That's mean, a trigger. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't put yourself in that mindset yeah. of murder. I'm, man, watch a goddamn uh, My Little Pony cartoon if you got to. Some um, love stories, some love uh, stories. Yeah, touch, touched um, by an angel or something. Yeah, love you know, stories. Listen, I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there you go. How would yeah, I just said this? I, I didn't mean to tell my age, but I'm 47. <laughs> <laughs> Do watch like talking. That. Um, watch talking. Yeah. Act. Do you have a fa- uh, uh, a social media platform, or do you have a YouTube? My platform? YouTube is, if for for instance, uh, it's watch talking act, just how it is. And if you type in Paula Paula Herlock, then next to my YouTube name, then that's what it'll it'll pull up my profile, and that's how you can join my uh, my page. And Mika, I want you to to um, let us know your page also. Um, it's Mika's personal development uh, on YouTube. All right. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Y'all can get back to it. I just wanted you to know who these people were because they both have, uh, I think, have had some history where they have come along and, and done some things. And they both, I think, share the their experiences on their pages, I'm assuming. Right? Mm-hmm. Can I say that? So that may be good uh, outlets for you, a uh, little podcast to go check it out. Um I've talked to Mika myself a whole lot and I know her story. So she's been through a lot. Um, and she, I hate to say it, but she had to figure out on her own. <laughs> I hate to say it, but she had to figure out on her own. So it's kind of sounds like what you did. You know, you had basically self diagnosed before you. So she has yeah. a lot to add. Watch, talk and act. I don't know him, but he sounds like he has gotten a handle on a situation. So that may be some, he's someone that you can actually also look up and get some information from. And that's always good. Yeah. You know, I don't suggest, I'm not telling you to do exactly what anybody does, but anytime you can get some information, you know, that is a good part of the internet or the YouTube spaces to learn mm-hmm. something. So definitely mm-hmm. it's your sources. Yeah. I mean, as a, this, this is so, it's been so big. Can we just admit that, 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 that this episode has been really, really big? So much information, bro. It's, it was so much healing in this episode. I mean, this is crazy, bro. Like, I can't believe it took me this long to get to YouTube. <laughs> Can I add to yeah. the My thing is, what are you going to do with it? Man, the you same thing I do every day, bro. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I take the stuff. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's the most important thing is what are you going to do with this information? Because we could talk to we blue in the face. Yeah. But if you don't do nothing with this information, it's falling on deaf ears. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, so man. please take advantage of this information. Don't just let it fall by the wayside. And Mika had something else she wanted to add. Go yeah. ahead. I, I got thank you. I gotta go tend to my husband, but I wanna answer a lot of I've been taking notes and wanting to answer a lot of um podcasts questions that he's asked earlier. Um mm. in regards to um trusting the man. <laughs> I've been noting um, when when I met again, I've been engaged multiple times, married twice. I'm on my second marriage. When I date, I, I'm courted and a man present himself to me and I trust in him what I see. I don't trust. I, I was raised by nine uncles and four brothers, so I don't trust anything that comes out of person mouth. But I look at their behavior and what they're showing me and I trust in what I see. Um, now, have I been wrong before? Yeah, I, I'm on my second marriage and uh, the other people I was engaged to, I didn't marry. So I don't, I don't look at that as like um, failure is, leads to success. If you're always good at something, you never fail. You'll never learn from that failure and you'll never succeed. Um, but you'll be more successful. You'll, you'll have an aspect of success, but you'll be more successful if you fail. And then you have to learn from that failure. You have to take stock in that failure to realize what occurred, what you didn't see before, what you learned from it, what are you going to take from it, how are you going to be accountable, and how are you going to apply that going forward and not keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Um, in regards to like anxiety and, and everything like that, um, I had oh therapists tell me that I put myself through a PTSD trauma and, and got through it successfully by taking bits and pieces of information from all of my therapists and, and applying what works for me 
and my situation and what I went through and took what did work and what didn't work. And I have a lot of that information that helped me on my platform. Um, my YouTube is in my primary. I just take information and put it on YouTube so that my clients can get basic general information for free. And it's open for anybody to get that information for free and take out of it what they need um, from it that will be helpful. But it's really important to write, pay attention to yourself, listen to yourself and be honest with yourself first. You have to have those five pillars um, for your own solid foundation, which is love, trust, communication, honesty and respect. And you have to have it for yourself first before you can have it for anybody else. And if you don't have it for your yourself and your partner don't have it for themselves, you don't have a solid foundation. In order to have a relationship be strong, and can stand the test of time and whatever's thrown to it is if it's built on a solid foundation. And that's where it starts from that pillar, those pillars, and then you build on those five pillars. Um, and in regards to women talking about feelings and men not, that nay, nay, that is not accurate for everybody. My husband is honest with me now. Does it take my husband a couple hours or days for him to collect his thoughts to figure out how he wants to? like what he's dealing with, what he's feeling with, and do I give him space? Absolutely. I can tell when my husband is different and when he's behaving different or if something's going on and I'll ask him, he'll tell me, give me a minute. And I give him some time. It can be a couple hours. It can be two days because men doesn't, don't really express, express it the way women expect it, but they do have feelings and they, they can express it. Women just have to learn how to listen and comprehend the way their man is communicating. And so mm -hmm. he tells me all sorts of stuff. He talks about how he feels, what he's thinking. He has these, all these ideas and all these thoughts. And I'm the one that I like to talk about what's on my mind, but then that's it. I, I'm not catty. I'm not all over the place with it. I don't mm -hmm. need anybody to understand. So everybody is different and their best partner is who compliment them and who they are and what they need and vice versa and not cut and dry how generalized men and women are because that's an inaccurate interpretation and that's all i had to share about it so i hope that's helpful i'm glad you said that thank you so listen guys this has been another outstanding outstanding awesome monday and i appreciate you all for being here um Watch, talk, and act. I want you to definitely come back. You're welcome to SB Nation at any given time. Mika, you know you're welcome here. You've been here before. I don't know where you've been, but I'm glad you're here tonight. Um, Hank, you know, you know, the doors are always open. <laughs> Hank, little podcast. We appreciate you. We're actually lifting you up and making sure you get everything you need. Thank you. Black Man Unfiltered, you're my co-host, and I appreciate you so much for being here on Monday. And I thank all of you in the chat, in the comment section for the, coming to the live. Y'all have been excellent as always. You know what? I go to some panels and it'd be crazy. But you all come over here to SB Nation and y'all really, y'all are standouts. So if no one's ever told you that, I'm telling you that I have an excellent support system over here in this comment section. Absolutely. And um and panels. So I appreciate y'all so much. Security boss. Huh? Tomorrow, eight thirty Central Standard Time, Black Men Unfiltered Network. Tomorrow's show is winning his heart. How a woman's unconditional love can influence her man's greatness. Mm, I got one for you also on Wednesday. Myself and family values um, will be with Real Fem, Real Fem Sapien on her channel. I want to say it's eight o'clock. Oh, we're gonna simulcast. So listen, look out for this coming. We will put the ad out tomorrow, but make sure real film. We're gonna be simulcasting with her. It's gonna be family values and myself. So y'all gotta be there. Y'all, SB Nation, I gotta show up. But it's Wednesday night. Time is eight p.m. Eastern. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. It's seven p.m. Eastern. But make sure you're here. We're going to simulcast it. Y'all, y'all listen. Last time we did that, you all were in the house. I appreciate y'all so much. So we're going to do it again. So make sure you're there. We're going to um, tomorrow put out the ad so you'll see what the topics are going to be. But it's myself and family values. We're going to be on uh, simulcast with real film. So thank y'all so much. Stay tuned. We're going to continue to bring you good content. And um, thank you for being here. And have a good rest of the night. Absolutely. Peace.
Relax, are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reason, so I ask Does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't stay No, I always gotta go Laying house to stay home with my soul On the road I can't stay No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul. Oh.